This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... With the top end of Stevenson, Grenado! Welcome to Football Daft, the Daft Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who thinks that Jamie Dodgers are the worst biscuit about. It's Chris Toll. It's Army Troops. How's Jamie Dodgers the worst biscuit about? I don't think there's any contest, to be honest with you, Ank. It's dry, horrible shite. No, but if you dip it in tea, you're brand new, you're daft, then that's what they're there for. I don't drink tea, but mate, I like it. Oh, well, you're tea. fucked. I like it. <laughs> and now, welcome a man. Tea. <laughs> who is raging as you can tell by his tone now this week after top of the league Kawarin Rangers lost the league to Auckland Leg Talbot despite them being 12 points off the top it's Grado aye uh, it's me it's myself I'll get into that in a wee bit I'm fucking raging as you can tell but um, how's everybody else doing coping with lockdown how's it how's how's the graft what's happening you've got Wayne's running about I've got my girlfriend's Wayne running about what's the deal non-stop mate non-stop aye How about- Power hosed the drive this morning and I looked like I'd just done tough mother. Aye. <laughs> I, I even watched River City last night, mate, and saw you uh, pose for a hemorrhoid poster. <laughs> <laughs> aye, I heard about that. You remember that one, one aye? aye? That's a good wee one, man. This is a box set of it, mate. Okay, <laughs> man. Da, na, na, na. Castle. Hello, buddy. You got to start getting on a bit of tune again. Sorry, mate. No, but just I was listening to the game last night. Mate, I had, um, oh, you here, should get, no. get your phone out and do the rock version, we've not heard that. <laughs> no, yeah, but do you know, who do you go to? <laughs> there's a rock version. <laughs> Aye, there's a rock version, mate, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. Bring it on, let me hear it get numb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually tweet it, but, because I went on the River City Mods on Twitter to go, that's fucking banging, and then... I'll just kind of like kid on, I made it, and no tell the cunt that really made it, and I'll make the money out of it. What you need to remember is the River City Moz, no fucking Metallica Moz, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you like what you like, and that's it. Anyway, guess what? I, I know I'm wrapped up like a fucking fist up here, man, I'm freezing, um, but I'll take this body while I'm in half. Guess what I tried for the first time at the weekend there? Mouthwash. <laughs> <laughs> Go for half it. Running. No, I maybe took this two weeks ago because wow. no, I'm mad dog, and I've I've been I've drank four bottles since then. I've tried every one. Did we not speak about this last drink. week? What? We spoke about this last week. See, I must have been drinking the mad dog. Fuck's sake, I've been drinking all week. <laughs> He's remember a character joke saying Liam Dolan calls it mad dog two zero two zero. That's right. I made I made a cut of myself. My memory's absolutely up my hoop. That was my breaking route. That was that was to try and. Uh, th- th- Temper, keep my keep my temper down before I talk to the the the, the co-winning Rangers manager who's waiting to come on the line because oh. I don't know if you know that Auchinleck Talbot are the winners. The Buffs are sitting. How many points clear? Twelve points. Twelve clear, points. It? Twelve points clear. Auchinleck have played about fifty percent of the games. I'm absolutely raging. My father's even wrote into the SJFA. I'm going to try and get Chris Rain on uh, the co-winning Rangers manager. It feels like April Fool's Day. It is a complete joke for Scottish junior football. The Auchinleck Talbot are the champions. What a redneck. Can Scottish football get any more fucking stupid? Aye, can you stupid? Could Crown Rangers the champions? Oh! I knew you were going to say that. I was waiting on it. <laughs> well, he's coming, isn't it? That was an it's open boulder. You two need to... You two need to... I gave you the link, you can't. I made you look good. You need, you need to decide what you want to happen here. Do you want the team in third in third place to have a chance? Or do you want the team that's top to be champions? Make your fucking mind up, Gregor. SPFL, SGFA, different organisations, different companies, <laughs> different priorities, <laughs> different situations, different leagues, different wages, different money pots, the lot. You have no clue what you're talking about, Crystal. Chris, um, it's a bit, Chris, it's a very, very, very different situation to the one you're it? hinting at there. How's what? It? Because Auchinleck Talbot are like fucking third in the league or something. They've got about, they've got about 10 games in horn. Which, right. by the way, I'm not saying they win the win. I'm not saying exactly. they win the win. I'm just exactly. saying, how can they, you know, you, you couldn't even mark their net with a red, what'd you say? What's, what's you the couldn't quote? Negate, 
Blowtorch. That's the one. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm never wrestling and knocking like any time soon. If I guess, but... <laughs> They'll be dancing in the streets of Talbot tonight. They're fucking right now. <laughs> right, I'm going to text Chris to come on. Chris has got Chris. Chris has got Chris. Yeah. Right. Mm. Hello, guys. I'm on. How you doing, my man? It's good to see you. As a Buffs fan, if I was four year old, it's brilliant to have a legend on the podcast. Finally, we had Murder McLeod last week, but this week it absolutely trumps it. Absolutely, no bother. Up a notch. I just want. <laughs> I just wanted to see see my dad. He can't work a computer for the for fucking his life, right? I mean, he goes on my mom's. Facebook, my mum's been, be- been dead for two years, right? It's weird it comes up, mum's now in line and you freak yourself, it's my dad looking for a snip about, he doesn't know how to use computers, right? But he sent an, an email to the SJFA last night, he filled out the forums, the full lot, um, wait and I'll get it for you just now, Chris, and see if, and, and let me see if you agree with what he says. And he's wrote in his full name, his address, his details, his phone number, if they ever want to get back to him, and his message is, SJFA have lost the plot, or have you had a few quid on the Talbot one in the league? <laughs> what do you think about that? Tell us about the situation. How does the boys feel? How does because I know I spoke to a couple of boys that put money in the buffs at the start of the year. This was a big year. This was a year that we wanted to win the league there, oh, and it's just fell flat in itself because of some stupid decisions made at the SJFA. Aye, oh, these things are never easy, obviously. You see the conjecture that there is, you know, with the SPL and stuff like that. I've obviously got to watch what I'm saying because I'm a Celtic supporter, so I don't want to be tripping. Right, myself. can I, hold on a minute, John, just get us, come on, cut off. <laughs> change, your name to, change your name to Cowan and Celtic, like John. <laughs> you should be managing St Anthony's next to Ibrox. This, this is why they gave me the job, because I'm a... Celtic supporters are cool winning. Uh, they know I'm used to taking flack. You know what I mean? They parade me up and down the street every now and again. <laughs> a Celtic supporter are cool winning? I know, I know, that's what I was thinking. Oh. There's no money. I know, there isn't. There isn't. <laughs> I've heard it all now. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but aye, okay, it's, it's, a very diff- it's a difficult situation for everybody. But in the, in the grand scheme of things, where we, where we lie, I feel our players, the players have been to some really, really tough runs and had some good teams, really top victories over the season. And then to have that kind of just cast aside and, and said, you know what, the team that's played 16 games, we're going to announce them as champions. <laughs> it just doesn't sit well. Yeah. Again, I think I've said, and I'm, being, I'm on record this saying, I've got no axe to grind with Orkin Lake. It's not them that made this decision. They're a good side, a right good side. Uh-huh. You can see with a league record, I think they've only lost one game. But after 16 games, we had only lost one game. We went in a wee bad run of form where we lost a couple of players through suspensions and injuries and we dropped points right before Christmas. So that can happen to them as well. They're not immune to that, although they've got probably a bigger squad. It, it, it's like watching, I suppose, a, 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 you drew the analogy of like running the Grand National and you jump the first 10 fences brilliantly. It only takes one bad fence and you're not going to win the race so Aye. there's a lot of fit to be played there's a lot of fit to be played that's and what I'm saying I mean I'm not saying at the end of the day that Talbot would never have won the remaining games that they had to play yeah I'm the exact same boat as you they might have won them all they might have Aye. won the record points they only they only lost one game last year and drew two but at this stage of the season they've lost one game and drew two of the new so there's a lot of unknowns and I think that's the big thing that rankles with me and the boys is that there's a lot of unknowns there. You're just assuming that they're going to go and do that and whilst they might have, nobody knows. What's happening with the junior leagues next season? What's, what's the arrangement? Is there no some sort of... Because yeah. uh, my girlfriend's father uh, is uh, Pat Breen for the winter. I, I know so so um, he's basic... I mean, I told him, look, there's a couple of winter fans that are only happy but he's saying, look, it doesn't matter for, in terms of next season... It's a, it's a, not a pyramid scheme, is it? What is it? It's some kind of... Well, what's, happening, what's happening is we, we've been what we call ring-fenced as junior football for years and years and years, 134 years it's been in existence. I never had an affiliation with the SFA other than the clubs that have won the league in the Scottish Cup in the last 10, 15 years have been allowed into the Senior Scottish Cup. So what the, what's happening now is we're basically bolting on open the Lowland League, which... Kelty are the champions this year of the Lowland League and they're going to go into the or they would have played off to go into the SPFL 
So what happens is the junior teams now, well, if we win more leagues and you've got a suitable ground, you go into the Lowland League and that would then give you the opportunity to join the, the, the professional ranks at a later time if you win the Lowland League. So, for example, um, you've got a tune the size of Cowan, which is equivalent to maybe Dumbarton or something like that. Aye. It gives us the opportunity to go and do what Dumbarton have done. There's, there's teams that have been protected and ring fenced, and, and, and it's no fair to single anybody out, but I've got a couple of boys that come from St. Ross, and Ross average crowd is similar to your average crowd. Their town's probably smaller, but they've, got no, they've not really had any chance, or the odds against them dropping out the league have been in their favour for a number of years. So, what we're looking at now is there's some ambitious teams within the juniors and big supported teams. You look at Pollock, Clyde Bank, and oh, the Glad- they still well supported. Aye, Irvin Meadow ourselves. Well, no, don't mention the Meadow Meadow. Aye, we don't don't mention them. But <laughs> as you know, as you know, there, there there's teams that are well supported in and around the west coast of Scotland. That they've not had an opportunity to go anywhere and progress. So this gives us an opportunity to progress and try and move on. And um, again, I like to say Oakenlake. Oakenlake have been a, a pheno- phenomenal team, a winning machine at their level for a number of years. But they're a big fish in a small pond. Now they're moving into a bigger pond and it remains to be seen whether they will become that big fish or can the other teams, you know, grow and use their, uh, their obvious population size difference to, to their benefit. So there's a lot of things changing, but I, uh, the mad world of junior football never surprises you. There you go. Well, Chris, honestly, I hope, hopefully the full of one is listening to this, listening to hear your voice. Were you, were you know in Clyde last night, Tom? Aye, I did a wee bit in Clyde last night talking. Um, Aye, well, you've, you've, I've you've come up in the game with Fitba Daft or whatever, I've been up in the world. <laughs> I've been up in the world. <laughs> Aye, it's funny you're saying like, all these things. That the publicity that this has drawn has probably given the boys in my team probably at least their wee spotlight because they did really well over the course of the season and their football accolades have probably been kind of taken away from them. So, Hopefully by talking them up and we kick on again next year and, and we go and kind of use this as a motivational tool to kick right on. Definitely, absolutely. Once this lockdown's lifted again, obviously sometimes we feel terrible on football podcasts talking about these issues yeah. when there is people dying and stuff like that. But obviously, ho- hopefully once the lockdown's lifted, we get... I keep, I keep going to say Abbey Park. I mean, my, my, my dad was raging when he's moved Park, but the, the, the place is looking absolutely fantastic. That's another thing as well. It would have been a good, you know, first year at, at the new ground to, 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 to lift the league. But um, just before you go, you get Jerry Polini's phone number. Oh, Jerry. I've got, yeah, I have got Jerry's phone number. Jerry still, Jerry still phones me up and says, I've got a player running about here. We've got four or five teams. Jerry's, Jerry's my govern scout. He is he? Is he really? Right, like, well, you see how much you come off the phone, Chris? Text him, tell him that the grado's after him and I'm wanting him on my podcast, right? Oh, by the way, he's a man for you. He would absolutely eat you up. He's some boy, Jerry. I bet you, he's, he's, he's a big Celtic fan, I know, ain't he? Hi, Jerry. Oh, yeah, Mega. <laughs> he's, he's a heavy Celtic man. Is he? Aye, he is, he is. He's an Italian in Glasgow, of course. He's, of course, Aye, he's a fucking Celtic fan. Jerry. He's a go, Jerry, Jerry, he's a go. I am getting Polini number five in the back of this jersey. I know, the only thing I tell you about Jerry is he eats pasta. <laughs> <laughs> right, Chris, thanks very much, mate, for coming on and clearing that up for us. You've Cheers, done well, mate. mate. Thank well, you. Thanks very much, pal. We are, we are the buffs. We are, we are the buffs. We are, we are the buffs. That was nice of Chris coming on, eh? Very Aye. good informative for junior fans. Good wee insight into the old junior game there. I know. Yeah, I'm not familiar with junior football. I know you're not. Know. I'm not really. The only team I'm kind of interested in now, because I work with you all the time, is the Buffs. Aye, I, I know, because really. I talk about them, man. That's the problem about that. But, I um, I, it was good, good to Chris come on, especially because of the situation that he's in now, obviously, under a bit of pressure, or not Aye, under a bit of pressure, but, you know, you know he's what? getting... He didn't seem very pissed off, did he? No, no. That's... I, I... But, do you know, what he said is true. It's going to put a lot up. It's going to put the buffs in, the buffs and junior football as a whole in a good wee bit of spotlight for a change now. Do you know what That's I mean? True. That's true, actually, when you put it like that. So, Definitely. But remember, on the show today, we've got the Legends Lottery, where it was down to me to get somebody on. The jig boys think of that? It was locked down. Everybody's in their house. Uh, I hope so. That's, that's, that's not even though, man. That's not a great though. It's locked down. Everybody's in their house. He had Junior Mendez on the phone and couldn't he get him on the show. <laughs> 
He had a lot on that week with the wrestling, didn't he? I know. I bet he's choking to go on a naughty. <laughs> and also on the show, we have a bit of a legend, the old Frank McAvenny. That'll be a good week chat with him later on. A Celtic boy for yourself, Chris. Aye, that's why I'm wearing this jersey again this week. This is the jersey that he was wearing when he had his most famous season at Parkhead. So... You better not um, hope. You better not hope we've no wound you up and uh, brought in Washington today. Uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you have any random football f- banter for us, please get on the Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. Right, if you've been in a road traffic accident and you're not at fault, G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with complete accident management support you require. They'll recover the cost from the app called Party, sort out a light for light replacement. They'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write off, they'll recover the pre accident value for your car and write you a big fat check for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as you charge the app fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't cold call, they don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, got on to G4 claims on 01698 767172. That's 01698 767, Radio's favourite aircraft. One seven two. <laughs> Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not at fault claims made easy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, this evening, whenever you listen to this podcast, I've obviously started a radio station this week, so I'm going to get used to this. Uh, good morning, how are we doing? And the big question this week is, uh, we were asking people to pick their all-time World 11 easy, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, if it's that easy, use the rules which were set out by Jerry, Jamie Carragher. That's Jamie Carragher, the, the what do you call it, the traitor that was brought up an Everton fan and then he became a Liverpool fan. That's when I had to shut his autobiography out. I thought, no, I'm not having this. The player had to have laid out in your lifetime. The number two players can come for the same country and the number two players can come for the same team. No two players, Grado, no, 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 no number no two players. <laughs> I just find that funny, I. <laughs> number two players. How have you managed to get number fake saying no? Fuck knows. <laughs> you alright, big man? I am just, I have just, I just a front it, you know. <laughs> you started to have so, so confident. So basically, I haven't had the time to come up with players this week. <laughs> I would probably end up, I'd probably end up mentioning the, the, the fake football names for the international superstar stalker. Remember that? The game in N64 with the fake names and all that. On the N64, man, that was brilliant. It's Greece against Argentina. Argentina are on the attack. Greece (laughs) have the defence. Greece. (laughs) Butatista. Aye. (laughs) That intro done, mate? Aye, that's intro done, mate. (laughs) Right, this this was an absolute boy, this one. This was was hard one. Told, did you get a team together? I did get a team together, right? So what we need to to say for the people at home or whoever's listening just now is that you can't have any two players from the same country and you cannot have had any two players that have ever played for the same team. Same club team. Aye. So even even if it was (coughs) just say for talking sake, right? uh, Roy Aitken and Shunsky Nakamura. You can't have them because they've both played for Celtic at one point in their career. Did you not forget that? Did you not forget that? Roy Aitken and Nakamura. Oh, uh, mate, I've had a journey, man. Honestly, it took me forever. Two, I'd, you had two Celtic players in the same team, didn't you? And Virgil van Dijk and Nakamura. <laughs> I, I went that far to get Nakamura into this team because he <laughs> 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 last time. I've ended up with... Oh, do you want me to read my team out? Nah. Go for it. Right, John, oh. you can, you can, you can uh, have a go at this if you want. Right, so in goals, we've went for Onana. What's his name? Oh, na na. Oh, na na. Right. Um, Branco. Stefan De Vries. Is that not what you're doing? A fucking swinger, Branco? 
Eh, Willie okay. Miller. Right. Paolo Maldini. Shunsuke Nakamura. Paul Scholes. Gareth Bale. Lionel Messi. Robert Lewandowski. And Didier Drogba. Who Drogba? Daddy Drogba? <laughs> Big Daddy Drogba. Big Daddy. I, I checked that over, Chris. That is completely legitimate. Well done, yeah. mate. Well done. Spot on. There's, there's no doubles up there. I've got two teams, right? I've done it twice because I wasn't happy with one of them. Right, okay, Gray, then. Gredo's loving this, man. Big yawning and all that, man. Go and get another strong bro, bro. Strong bro, bro. Strong bro, bro. Right. Remember the nut job keeper, Rainy Higueta, or whatever you call him. Aye, right. He's my goalie, right? I've got Danny McGrain left back. Oh, left back! Aye, run that up, you! Aye, the greatest wing back to ever put on a fucking pair of bits. I put them left backs. I've got Wally Sagnall right back, right? Put Wally Sagnall at left back. Right, well, Sagnall. that's my two full backs, right? right Vincent, okay. Com- Vincent Company, Matthias Sammer, two centre halves, right? Right. right. Dunga, right? Golden midfielder, Gaza. And Boban, just in front of him. Boban, yeah. Up front, CR7. Uh-huh. Drogba. And uh-huh. Messi. And Messi. Right, let's like go over this. I'm going to have a bash at this one, she's done, by the way. Mate, I... it'll take you, mate, it'll take you uh, about fucking four Ma- weeks. No, no. My only question was, did Zammer, p- what team did Zammer play for when he was in Italy? That's my only question with that one. Like, I'm sure he played Italian football. He was it no Inter Milan? It was Inter Milan. I thought it was Milan, so I was going to pull you up on that one. But no, uh, I'm sure it was Inter. I because I thought Boban and Zammer was a double, but I think Boban you, was only AC Milan. I think you managed it, Stephen. Well done, sir. I've got another one. Right, hurry up. Right, do you want another one? We'll just go with that one. We'll go with that one. We'll ah, that's fine. Mother Lamb is Tafarel, Philip Lamb, Godin, Company, Maldini, Gerard, Zidane, Roy Keane, Messi, McCoyston, Drogba. Right. 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 I'll, go. I'll do mine then, right? You did it now? Aye, I'll make it up. Mate, mate, the fucking podcast will be for about eight hours if you're trying to do it now. Right, hold on, right. Right, just do it. Let's do it. Cradle works that out. But no. Let's do some of the listener suggestions. No, 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 no. Let me go well, first. So I'm going to my head. All right, okay. Right, um, right, no Bartes, the guy that smoked fags that played with Juventus and Parma, goalie. Buffon. 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 Right, so that immediately, that eliminates any PSG, UV, Parma, or Ital- Italian players. Yeah. Aye. Puyo, Bob, Puyo, Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore was in your lifetime. Right, I fucked it, forget it, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, good, good effort, Grado. Looking at... Thank you. Scott Killen said Schmeichel, Ivanovic, Carlos Marchena, Maldini, Philip Lamb, Zidane, Gerard, then he put in brackets reluctantly, Paul McStay, Bebeto, Messi and Bergkamp. I've got an issue with that team. Bob, right. If it's Roberto Carlos and he's got Zidane as well, they're both Real players. No, it's not Roberto Carlos, it's Carlos oh. Marchena. Ah, right, 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 right. Aye. Hawkeye there, John, I see. All over it. I've had great fun this week on Twitter with all the listeners that have tweeted in tweet, tweet, their teams and I've just been going back absolutely lambasting them. Aye, <laughs> I, would I, I would never do that to somebody purely for the fact that I know how bad it felt when folk were coming back going, hey, actually, if you look at your team, um, oh. both of those players have played for Southampton <laughs> at one point in their career. No, a bit tall. A big Celtic right. man like yourself. If you look at your team, you two Celtic players. Mate, fuck up, man. Honestly, <laughs> that was school boy stuff. I don't know, at, really, least really Grado, at least Grado's getting a bash putting Bobby Moore in there. He just wasn't born in time. You know what I mean? <laughs> he couldn't have been Frank McAvenny in his team after he put in Bobby Moore anyway. That's that. That's it. Fuck. Hi, right, West Ham. <laughs> Stephen really? Ross says All Black, Lamb, Terry, Company, Maldini, Mbappe, Manny. Iniesta, Cristiano Ronaldo, Gabriel Batigol, and McCoy. We've got Hunter here. Is that all right, John? But has he done well there? Is he one? Aye, aye, he's fine. Right. He's fine. Right. We've got Hunter here. I wonder if this is. Uh... 
Who the fuck calls himself Hunter in Scotland? Anyway, maybe, he's went for... Maybe Triple H is listening. I know you're going to say Triple H, aye. Maybe it's something to do with that, Right, uh, we've got Oliver Kahn, Maldini, Ramos, Company, Nedved, Gerard, Barry Ferguson, Giggs, Messi, Bearcamp and Drogba. That's the best one yet. That's a good team. Aye, that is the best one yet. That is the best one yet. Gerard and Barry Ferguson. I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would like um, Chris to read the next one's name. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Billy Brothers to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, his, his side is All Black, Lamb, Ramos, Company, Maldini, Platini, Gerard, Zico, Cooper, Messi, and Merkamp. That's a good team as well. Yep. I'm going to catch out, folk. I know. Fine. It's actually leaving so many silences because I keep looking at these teams going like that. We need to talk. David, 86, says, well, his team, Gorham, Ivanovic, Company, Godin, Maldini, Modric, Gerard, Nedved, Messi, Lewandowski, and Mbappe. It's a good team. I think the goal, no bad teams. I, th- I, th- I think the goal in it is just if you're trying it and if you go away and try it because it will do your nut in for a couple of hours but it's looking for those players that have been kind of one man teams like Salam and Maldini and all that sort of stuff. Aye. Aye. Wait a minute. Like, look at this last team. This guy's put Ronaldinho in. Ronaldinho played for near enough every fucking team in Europe. <laughs> so I'm quite impressed that he's managed to build a team around that. Did Ronaldinho not play for AC Milan? He did. He's getting and Maldini's in that team. And Ronaldinho Aye. in that team. Ah, yes. Yes. Dunham. <laughs> Alistair Waddle, you fucked it, mate. Alistair Waddle, up the road. Up the road, mate, up the road. <laughs> right, so, every week on Football Daft, we've got the Legends Lottery. Well, myself, Fred, and Chris Toll need to track down those cult heroes from clubs. Toll, I think you're in the lead, didn't you, mate? I'm in the lead. I'm in the lead. I'm winning. Winning. Well, saying that, John, producer John, you got something on last week. I did. So I'm back in. The, I'm back in here now. I've got a point on the board, which is more than Greedo's got. I've got a point, Hannah. Ah, you've yes. got you've got a point for Evil Dan Demon. Greedo, so what you got? I can't concentrate through these Chelsea shots. Come, because Mars is fucking ringing. Ah, that old chestnut. Mars is ringing. Because you've not got a legend on. That famous, that famous <laughs> excuse for not getting a legend on. Bring it up. Listen, see before you joined this podcast, I'm telling you I had them all. Jose Katongo. Johnny Russell. Fucking tell Jack us about, Nicholson. Tell no, us Jack about Nicholson. Nicholson. What was his name? Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. What was his name? Sam, Sam Nicholson. Nicholson. Sam Nicholson. <laughs> hey, so this week, boys, I have got somebody. Yes! Yay! Man. Right, finally. Right, I've got somebody. I'm waiting on somebody else as well, so I might have two in the line. I might have somebody next week as well. Maybe. Right, maybe. I want to get somebody then, because that would put you in the lead. Well, will this not put me in the lead? No, this brings us even. Yeah. I've, had, I've had Tony Watt and uh, Joe Tortellano. Well, can I... Tony Watt didn't count, mate. How not? He's Tony Watt's never off this fucking programme. <laughs> Talk about it. And he's been on the show before, so that's a point to Gaffke. So Tony, Tony Watt did me count. <laughs> right, 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 boys. Tony Watt's that much a technology geek. He's probably listening into his right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably got a fucking live feed in his computer now. <laughs> well, well, listen, listen. Well, he, was, he was posting about other podcasts the other day. I says, you're a traitor, Tony. And he comes back to <laughs> He come back and he says that it's for a good cause, so fair play. Uh, well, listen, lads, I don't want any arguments, so there is going to be a change in the rules after today, after we've met right. Stephen's guest, so we'll reveal that at the end, because I think right. it's getting a bit too easy, so we're going right. to change the rules, okay? So who have you got, Stephen? Right, so that's me. It's getting a bit too easy. We've only had fucking four people on. <laughs> so this week I've got ex-Norwich City, Scarborough. Clyde and Partick Fissile player, Jamie Mitchell, right? So he's going to come on and talk about his career. He's connecting to audio. How you doing, mate? He's not connected yet. Got Cradle in his pants, Jamie. Oh, cradle, man. <laughs> We've got guest Cradle. Their actual, their actual wife fronts look amazing. Right. 
That's me, That's That's me, me. mate. How you doing, my man? You okay? Aye, uh, good, mate. How are you? Not bad. I'm sorry, one of the first things you seen there was Grado standing in his drawers, man. Aye, sorry, mate. I'm waiting in my Chelsea uh, shorts drying when my ass is sweating like hell. I see it again? Uh, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking exclusive. Hey, I can get that. I should expose yourself on the internet. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. <laughs> you, yeah, better, you, yeah. better, you better pe- hope people don't think I'm a child and you've done it to a win. Aye, hang with his face out, John. Seen it in the head. Make him do that, man. Fucking <laughs> very much. So they don't think it's a win. <laughs> so I'm sorry I had to see that, Jamie. Thanks for joining us. It's all right, mate. Pleasure. Uh, so how's old lockdown keeping you, mate? Tough going, mate, to be honest with you. Uh, stuck in a house with a two-year-old and Missy's working from home as well, so it's no easy, but... I feel your pain, brother. I feel uh, your pain. Hard gone, mate, hard gone, but... I've got we, the, well, the wee going through meltdowns and as well, like proper demon stuff, so... Aye. You know, I'm, I'm you close, to, close to volley enough, to be fair, but... What have you been having for your dinner at night? Huh? What have you been having for your dinner at night? Just uh, steaks or what? Or? Steaks, mate. Steaks, pork chops. Keeping it lean? Lasagna, aye. aye Lasagna? Mate. Red, red meat. Red, red meat. Are you a red meat guy? Aye, aye. A, I was told as an 18-year-old I need to bulk up, so I eat a lot of steak. Let's see your guns. Still no works, mate. Still no <laughs> works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jamie, talking of getting told to bulk up and stuff, your career, yeah. let's touch on that. So you started where at Norwich? Started at Norwich, mate, aye. As a... Uh, I moved in there as a 12-year-old, um, kind of seven-year contract they offered me at that, at that time, uh, <clears throat> 1990. So I moved in there, I had my school years down there, um, went on the S form in Norwich, YTS, then turned professional, uh, and then coincidentally got released when I was 19 because I was too small. <laughs> so... I feel your pain there as well, mate. Uh, I was, I, I was, uh, I was quite, I know, I'm quite big in this room actually, but there, there was five, I was, I was five feet eight, um, but I was, I was only about maybe nine and a half, ten stone at that time. I hadn't bulked up as, you know, we were talking about a minute ago, I've still not, but uh, it was about nine and a half, ten stone. I was training with the first team. I was, I was, um, you know, going away in the away games. I was the kind of 15th man as it was back then. Uh, but, you know, Norwich went through a few uh, financial troubles in 1995, 96. I don't know if you know much about it, but it was like Robert Chase at that time and they were losing fortunes. So they'd, sure bought, they, they'd bought my mum and dad a house uh, when I moved down when I was 12. Um, I saw it, yeah. They'd bought them a house. It was... <coughs> That's what Gaza, how he signed for Spurs, isn't it? It was, it was similar, mate. I, it was similar. So that's <laughs> that, that, did, that's did, why did I Did any of your family get a sunbed? <laughs> they got a sunbed. They got my dad a job. Everything. <laughs> Uh, so it was a two hundred and fifty grand house to be fair. Uh, I'd, I'd lived in Fernhill. I don't know if you know that. And uh, Fernhill and Rutherglen up until I was twelve. So going for Fernhill, a uh, quarter million pound house. That's my Chelsea Lord. short. Sorry, Jamie. It's all right, mate. It's a good story as well. You're killing it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Two minutes. Now we want two minutes. There we go. I don't. That's it. Sorry, mate, for cutting. Sorry, right. It's all right. There we go, he's sorted now. Sorted now. Uh, so, so a quarter of a million house they bought you, mate? Quarter of a million house, mate. Um, so, so when they went through there, when they were they were struggling, I was too skinny. They couldn't afford to keep me on in terms of waiting for me to bulk up. And they needed to sell my mum and dad's house, which is their house, ultimately. The, no the clubs. Way. So it was worth maybe in, in 1996, maybe three, four hundred grand. So they wow. needed that money back, obviously. And then just release me. They get parked out the house. And I was like, kind of, you know, one of them. You weren't expecting it, but Jesus that was me. On, How on did you more feel that react to that? You know what I mean? That's. I know it was because we weren't expect. It's different if I was, you know, if I was shite and I wasn't getting anywhere near the first team squad. Aye. Or, you know, I, I knew I was on my way out, but it was the opposite. I, I'd been doing well, and all the players were saying to me, "Oh, you're going to get your your next three, four year deal." And it was Gary Megson that sat me down and just said, "Look, Jamie, you're." We can't afford to wait till you bulk up and uh, we're going to have to make your, your mum and dad homeless as well. That was wow. as, br- that as, br- crazy, as brutal man. as brutal as that. So that's, uh, that's, that's like you're just up there one minute then down there. Yeah. Talk to me. So they, who, they, they got a month and they were at the house. Who was on what first team players? What any big names at Norwich for you there when Sutton was there then? Sutton, aye. So it was when they were in the Premier League and um, aye, Real Fox, Chris Sutton, Darren Eady. 
Danny Mills, Craig Bellamy. Mills, Bellamy. So Mills was in my year group at school, so I grew up with him. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy Goss was he Jeremy right? Goss cleaned his boots for that famous goal in 1993 what against player. Bayern Munich uh, what a player man loved a strike so he, I mean, that season particularly scored a few crackers if, if I think back but uh, he was there and Brian Gunn was the goalie so they had a lot of good a lot of good players at that time what was um, Big Sutton like any memories of Big Sutton uh, can I be truthful everybody's <laughs> 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 crab it <laughs> it's crab, as you know. So big son. So I, I play. I ended up playing against him years later when I was at Thistle and he was at Celtic. So he, he, he kindly remembered me at that point. Uh, but I used to clean his boots. So uh, he, he's not really changed much in thirty years. To be honest with you, he's exactly the same as he was then. Uh, I remember one time he told me I was his boot boy. I went into the dressing room. Jamie, come here. Or he used to call me wee man. Come here. Here's my bank cards. Go down and check how many zeros are on my account. I.e. he's got, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds in his account. I was on £29.50 as a YTS. Uh, and it was like, Jamie, go on, go on you go, wee man. And, and I mean, I'd have took £300 every time. I was gone. I was gone. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> I know, he ended up bankrupt, though, so he might have noticed it years later. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I sat but, here, I sat at a dinner room one night, right, where there was loads of football players all at the one table. He had a big fillet steak, mashed ties, the yeah. full lot, and he sat with his face tripping him all night. I'm uh, going, fucking look at this day, you're done, look at that, done, man. Fucking <laughs> smell in your face. Uh, the only one that sat there crabbing out of his fucking mind. Uh, he was a bit of a, bit of a strange character. He's, he's born and bred in Norfolk, so I think there's a few of them down there or like that, but he's, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a funny, funny individual. He's a funny bugger. He's a funny, funny bugger, bugger. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I loved him as a Celtic player. I like the way that he fights the corner for Scottish football when he gets the... Yeah. He's entertainment. But he does come across as a complete and utter fucking wank. He's right. the male version of Katie Hopkins. <laughs> I'm not yeah, to the controversial one. Well <laughs> Katie Hopkins, turn that up, you. He tries to get he, himself he, over. That's what I, he but he's not a fucking racist wank. <laughs> 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 well, let me tell you about this time. No, no. <laughs> 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 so after Norwich, mate, where was it after Norwich? So Norwich, after that, uh, after that incident of getting released, the, the Norwich assistant manager at the time was a guy called Mick Wadsworth. Uh, I don't know if you know him. He ended up at Gretna years Gretna later. Gretna manager, wasn't he? Uh, uh, he ended up at Gretna years later. So he got offered the job at Scarborough, who were in League Two at the time. Uh, they were they hired him as the manager. He he offered me a deal to go with him. I could have, I could have come back up north to Motherwell that time. Brian Gunn was really friendly with Alex McLeish and I come up to speak to Big Ek and uh, But I decided to go to Scarborough. I decided to stay in England at that point. And, uh, so I moved there, two-year contract, played league football. It was brilliant. I had two years of, of mayhem, to be honest with you. I was set free, had my own flat. So it was just... Two years of chaos, to be honest, but uh, I can't really tell half the stories. But I, I brought it. Want to change it? So they gave me my debut in league football. I played nearly ninety, a hundred games for them, and uh, I had you know a lot of good memories there. I got invited back for a Legends game last year, which was good, and I played in that. Uh, Dean Windass was playing, and these guys, so it was Brilliant. good. There was, there was about maybe eight or nine thousand people there because they ended up, unlike Rangers, getting liquidated, uh, and and come back. Is Scarborough Athletic, so they get liquidated in 2007 when they get relegated into the conference, owing two or three million pounds. So you're a Rangers man. I, I used to go and watch <laughs> Rangers as a boy with my dad. He used to take me home and away. Soon as era, even before that, 83, 84, Jock Wallace used to go home and away everywhere. Uh, I'm talking. You know, by chance to go to Rangers, but didn't you? Was it? Did you know decide? Was it Rangers in Norwich at the time when you went to Norwich? I so I'd, uh, I was playing for Rangers Boys Club. Char Charlie Miller um, was in the year above me, so no Charlie. Well, oh. Bar Barry wait, you, wait, you would that have been Jamie? So that was 88, 89, 90 that era. Um, did, you, did you bump into Gordon Ramsay? No. <laughs> no, I never seen, no, I never seen Gordon. Uh, Delia Smith at Norwich, but no, no Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Come on, get me out, them, get me out. What she said? Let's aye, be let's him. Be him. That's it. Aye. Delia was better than Gordon. But, uh, <laughs> so what was I saying? Uh, I Charlie Miller was a year above me. Ferguson Barry was a year below me. 
And then, so I played for Rangers Boys Club. Rangers wanted to sign me. They offered me a signer on fee. And I, I kind of deal up until I was 18. So you're kind of schoolboy YTS. Tottenham offered me the same deal as Norwich. They offered me a hefty signer on fee. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't buy the house. So I had to move down to London when I was 16 and stay with a landlady. So I decided to, to move to Norwich. Uh, well, my mum and dad, to be honest with you, decided for me to move to Norwich and thought it was the best avenue for kind of making it in first team football. And, you know, <laughs> it nothing to do with the fact that they were getting bought a house, eh? Uh, <laughs> exactly, mate. Exactly. I say that to them all the time. They, you know, they, they still deny it to this day, but I know. I know. Hey. Jamie, Jamie, definitely Norwich is the best choice for you, Jamie. Never mind Tottenham <laughs> Never mind Glasgow Never. Rangers. No, no, Norwich is the best choice for you, mate. Never mind that hundred grand that Tottenham are offering you. Here's a, we'll just go to Norwich and, and stay in that house with an apple tree. It was lovely. It was very nice. <laughs> I can't believe you played at Rangers Boys Club in 1988, man. You fucking, you don't look that old. Thanks very much, mate. I know. I'm fucking uh, older than you. <laughs> and I was born that year. 43 now, mate. 43. That must, uh, have been a, that must have been a bit of a nightmare being at Ibrox in 1988 because, you know, like the old... Uh, Centenary is ruining the treble for you and all that stuff, lads. Know what I mean? Oh, uh, Jamie, I just remember. ignore him, Jamie. Ignore him. <laughs> I remember the Gary Stevens. Uh, Black Castle will be a coronavirus. <laughs> I'll be five years, ten years. Just let everybody know. <laughs> so coming back up then after Scarborough, where was it? You went Clyde, wasn't it? Ended up so after Scarborough, I was on the after two years of mayhem. I, my career was a, a downward spiral. To be honest, we had too much of a good time in Scarborough. It was my own fault, but. Um, so I get released night of the, the, again lost money we, we got into the playoffs we nearly get promoted to League One we got into the playoffs one game away from Wembley so they put a lot of money into that uh, we had a right good team I don't know if you remember Gary Bennett he used to play for Sunderland Andy Ritchie striker you know, Andy really good, a striker man uh, really good players so they, they were spending a lot of money we never get promoted uh, so I get released because they were offering me half half the money and all that, and I said no. So they just said I tried to tried to negotiate. They just said beat it. So I get I get released. <laughs> called your bluff. I call my bluff. See you later. So uh, my mum my mum wrote to a lot of clubs just saying about my history and I you know the, you know a kind of wonder kid and all that shit. And uh, maybe they come back. Wigan did bid for me when I was playing for Scarborough. Apparently they bid quarter a million. I get pulled into the chairman's office. They said they were rejecting it because they think they could get more money for me, but they ended up releasing me. So I, I had no clubs to go to. My mum wrote to you a lot, or faxed, as you do back in the days. Uh, and, uh, and fax. Uh, cl- fax. Fax machine. And uh, Clyde come back, Ronnie McDonald, was one of the very few, and he said, we'll, we're in the Scottish Second Division, we'll give you a deal if you want to come back up and try your luck. So my mum and dad were still living in England at that time, so I, I moved back up um, myself, year 2000, 99, sorry, 2000. Signed for Clyde, and then kind of got my confidence back and done quite well there. So you know, we won, the, won the league, etc. Yes, my, my mate was playing for Clyde at that time. Uh, Graham McGee. He was, uh, he, was, he came through. <laughs> the, he, he's the he's a young boy. Came through the ranks. He was centre half. I I remember him. I he was he was that's who I used to go and watch when I was playing when he was playing for the Gow as well. Um, Aye. But really? I mean, Aye, but uh, I, I, I used to love going to Clyde uh, to watch to watch any you know, Clyde and uh, East yeah. and all that. But he was like you were just saying there was was it Brown? Did Brown Ferguson have a hand in, in Clyde at that time? He was just after me. <laughs> he he was just after me, Chris. So it was me. So that was the time where they they signed a lot of junior players. So Clyde notoriously again was spending a lot of money and older pros. Spent, you know, kind of wasting money. So they decided, Ronnie decided to go down the junior route. So they took a lot of boys from Mary Hill and uh, Paul Narfoley, Mark McLaughlin, Jack Ross, Hibs uh, manager. So Jack came for, I think he came for somewhere, a, a junior team for Dundee or Camelin, I think he came from. So we, again, good players, good boys that maybe hadn't got the opportunity in senior football. So uh, they were giving them, them a chance. And, you know, certainly. We were a hard working team and hard to beat. So we won the league in two, year 2000, got into the first division, and uh, I nearly got promoted to the Prem. Um, you know, we, again, right good team. And I'd left to go to Thistle by that point. Uh, and death threats a lot, but. Aye. Uh, I get death threats. Yeah, well, I really I think. Thistle, man. That's worse than Mo Johnson, but. You know, <laughs> I, I, 
I had to, I had to do it. So at that time, I left. My contract was up at Clyde. I was doing well, and I had the choice to go again. Some of the career decisions I made, but oh, I wouldn't, <laughs> cha- I wouldn't change it. Hearts were interested in me, Mullowell, and a few others. But Thistle were the first ones to come in for me, and uh, really were really keen to to sign me. And I went and met John Lambie, and I loved him Brilliant. straight away. And I thought, you know, Glasgow team. It's I just got a good. Club, mate. A good feeling about them, at a great club. I saw the good feeling about them, so I signed for them. You know, kind of the first contract that they put on the table. I just signed, and uh, I was 25 at the time. And it, you know, the first two years in particular were great. And then, as I'll touch on in a minute, I got, I got injured, and it wasn't great towards the end. But certainly in the first few years, it was brilliant. What was your dressing room like? Yeah, was it a good, good, good bunch of boys at Thistle? Not mental. Right. Absolutely mental. So we had Amazing. Martin Hardy. Uh, I don't know if you know, you know big mad mental. He was he was some boy, uh, great guy. Alan Archie was there. Scott Patterson. Um, who else did we have? Jamie Alan Dol- Archibald was he there? Uh, Alan right? Archibald, I uh, Jamie Dolan, Stephen Craigan, Craig's was there. Uh, uh, David Rouse and Jerry Britton was mental. You know, great guy, hilarious. Alex Burns up front. So with, with the nucleus of a good start in 11, that 3-5-2 that we played. Uh, a really good start in 11. And I think we finished like joint seventh uh, in the Prem at that, my first season. So that was 2002-2003. That was the year Rangers won the league by one goal. You know, the Deferman. Uh, Aye, that's right. Come on up here. Uh, so we... we, we done Do you remember that, Cass? No, I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one. Aye, I was on the all week, mate. Uh, I you, you can get it in catch up. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was good. My big mate Chris Sutton said to him, I'm way down that day, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> big Sutton, aye, aye. Colmarno put up some fight against you that day, didn't he? Oh, no. Good old Gordon Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jamie, how hard was it? Like, obviously, you'd been like Clyde, Fissel, good dressing room at Fissel and that. And your career just got cut short, though, didn't it? I so I doing, doing well again. I got to maybe 27, 28. You know, I still, I still stayed with Thistle. I could have left, but I stayed with them, signed another new contract. I, I just loved it there. I, was, I loved the fans, great club, great everything. So I thought I'll just stay. I was never going to make millions new anyway. So I thought I'll just carry on with them. So I signed another deal. And then I started to get a kind of niggly pain in my groin when I was training and, and playing. I was playing through it. And I uh, you know, before games, the Fizz used to go and stretch me in the middle of the pitch. I'm getting my groin stretch. I look pretty weird, but uh, it, it kind of helped me before the games to, you know, be a bit freer and, and, and play. And then it gradually got worse and worse. So it came to the point where they thought I was making it up because I was telling them this pain I had. And, um, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't get to the bottom of it. They sent me for MRI scans, nothing. Um, you know, so I got to the stage where, Jamie, we think this is, you know, just play through it. So I got, to, you know, another, further on, I, uh, I went for an x-ray, just a random, you know, bog standard x-ray. Never heard anything from it. Um, carried on with this, you know, this pain, but I just kept playing through it. And then I get called into the, the manager's office uh, before I, we were playing Fulham in a pre-season game. This was 2004, 2005, remember then. Um, so Jerry gives me the shout. Jerry, oh, he called me Mitch, because that was my, Mitch, well, coincidentally, that was my nickname. Mitch, come into the, uh, let me have a word with you. So I'm thinking, what have I done? Had I been out the night? You know, I was trying to think of all the possible scenarios. <laughs> Went into the manager's office and I walked in, the chairman was there, chief exec, physio, doctor, Jerry, Derek White, a um, couple of other directors. So I walked in, I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And he said, Sit down. So I sat down and then the, that was actually the club doctor that said to me, Jamie, we've had your x-ray results back. Um, I, I just need to be totally honest with you. You're going to have to retire from professional straight away, professional football straight away, um, or else you'll be in a wheelchair within, you know, three or four years if you carry on at this rate. Wow. Um, you've got a degenerative right hip, you know, an injury in your right hip. Your, your hip is fucked, basically. Um a bit like Andy Murray, but it was worse, the actual ball and socket joint. The cartilage had worn away, and that's where the pain in my groin was coming from. Um, it was deferred pain, as they called it, from my hip into my groin. So every time I was running or kicking, the 
it was the ball and socket joint. That's crazy. Were you, were you taking that in at the time for the pain to mass the pain? I'm just taking normal ibuprofen, you know, just a couple, couple of hundred milligrams of that to try and take, try and get through it. Aye. But we didn't know what it was. So, you know, they gave me that news. Due to play against Fulham, I obviously I never played. I come out in tears, to be you know brutally honest. I come out in tears. Yeah, well, My mum and dad were in the, the stand. They said, "What's wrong with me?" I said, "I've just been told I need to retire." I was twenty-seven, and uh, they're like, "What? We moved to Norwich for that?" <laughs> 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 uh, what? You, and I said, "I have, you know, I've got this hip injury." So I went back in the Monday. Said another option for you is you don't train. Um, you know, you, you can play a bit like Paul, Paul McGrath used to do. I used to play for Aston Villa. I remember his knees were goose, so he used to just play on a Saturday. Aye. So I, I had I had two years left on my contract at that time. So at that age, I just thought I want to keep playing. I still think I can do a job, and I tried to keep it secret from from people in clubs. And obviously, as a professional, you don't want to show any signs of weakness or any ailments at all because you'll just get you know annihilated. A few of my teammates knew, obviously, because it came out naturally. Uh, and uh, a good clue was I wasn't training, so I'd come out. I'd come in in the morning, do a few exercises. I'd go swimming, and it was just non-weight bearing exercise that I would do. It. And I would play on a Saturday, but you know, as the season went on, uh, that was in the first. We'd been relegated from the Prem in the first division at that time, and uh, as the season went on, I could feel myself losing. You know, a yard or two. My game was all about sharpness and, and speed and second balls and box box and scoring goals, etc. From midfield, and I could feel myself not being able to do half the stuff that I was trying to do. And I could hear a few moans and groans from the crowd. And I was dying inside to say, "I'm playing through this pain barrier here." You know, but aye, exactly. I, I, you don't know the real reason. Aye, and I, I couldn't because then it would have come out. And, and go back to the point of what I was taking. So at that point, I was taking heavy duty painkillers to get through. What ones? It was like a thousand milligrams of like ibuprofen, the big horse tablets that you would get to try mm. and nullify the pain. I would take that and paracetamol and just cocodamol, these type of stuff to, to even, I mean, you know, null it a wee bit so as I could play. I mean, I know folk with hip injuries that have ended up, you know, addicted to painkillers and stuff like that. Aye, I Is think, that, well, it's, it's, it's quite easy to be addicted. I never thought at the time because I was just thinking I need to take these to play. I never thought mm. of the addictive part of it, but I did take them right up till I got my hip replaced, which I did when I was 33. Because that's, that's a heavy duty operation to get at that age. The pain uh, you must have been uh, in for quite a while, do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so I'd, Fuck. I, I lasted another season until I was 28, 20, I started the next season, come back for pre-season, and honestly, I was last in all the runs and all that, and I used to be quite near the front, I used to be first in mm. the stamina drills and you know pre-season drills, and I was dragging my leg a wee bit, and I was like, ah, look, I, can't, I genuinely can't do it anymore. And I don't know why I'd be defeatist, that's the last person I am, but it was one of them that I thought, I'm embarrassing myself a wee bit here as well. And I looked like an idiot. So, I Aye, thought... you feel you're not doing yourself justice, because you know Aye. what you can do, but you just can't. That's can it. Aye, so I was getting, obviously, fans could see it, players could see it. And I thought to myself, why, why am I doing this? I'm nearly 29, and I'm, I'm going to be in a wheelchair by the time I thought, if I don't stop. And uh, so it was just one morning, I'd done training, and I just... I just went into the physio office. Says George Hannah, I think. I says George, that's me finished. I, I can't do it anymore. That's a sin, man. That's that's and, a heartbreaking uh, story, man. I know. I don't want to be. I don't want. No, 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 no. But it's a good story. But it's good. It's a good. Like, it's not a good story. But, no, you know I don't mean that. It's a good story for you to share, and it you, and it just shows you, you know, sometimes when 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 fans are on players' back, they don't know the background, they don't know what's happening in people's personal lives, they don't know Could the real story, in. and Could you have people in stands fucking yeah. growling and stuff like that. It must be really uh, frustrating. Ah, uh, I, I mean, ah, uh, you're right. It couldn't. I mean, there's a lot of time the players are just maybe not doing themselves justice the on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so quite, quite rightly getting a bit of stick, but for me, I mean, I always always worked hard okay. and stuff. And I could, it was one of them, I couldn't get, I used to be quicker, I couldn't get there. And I was at that level, you soon notice. And the players you're playing against, I remember, I don't know if you know Craig McPherson, had you, brilliant guy, I, I played with McClyde, he ended up at Falkirk, Morton. I think he's a coach at Rangers now. I remember playing Falkirk, he was left side, I was right side. And I always used to do well against Had you know, mind me, mind me saying, but there was a game that season, I couldn't get me in. And he actually said to me, Mitch, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm playing against him. I says, I says Had you. I can't get near you, mate. You're just too good for me today. But inside, I knew it. Aye. I said, I said Hadji, 
great left foot as he is, he was a, he wasn't he was the slowest guy in the planet. You know what I mean? So if Hadji's tearing me down that left hand side, I thought I need I need to chuck it. So it was one of them. It was one of them. You know, I was reaching twenty nine. I thought I'm just going down the way here. I could even play. I could even play second junior, but or, or junior and anything. Not that I probably would have done, but. So what is it you did, Dave? What, what, what's, what's this? You gear up for what happens? Yeah, so I gave up. I still had about a year left in my contract that time. Uh, you know, without, in fact, no, it doesn't matter. I'll just tell you. So, so I had a year left. Don't need to tell us if you don't want it. No, it's mere. I, it's, it's one of them where you had a year left in my contract. I understand that was due money for that year. I'd signed it in good faith. I got injured. It wasn't an impact injury, so I couldn't claim any insurance of any any part. You know, uh, it was a wear and tear injury, so I wouldn't get any money from anywhere. Um, I was on maybe you know about five hundred quid a week at that time. You were getting two hundred odd pound appearance money, and then your win bonus. So it still was quite you know decent wages, which had to stop. So the club were like that. You know. You need to earn your money. You need to come in and, and maybe work or. Get the spreadsheets and all that. <laughs> but I didn't know I had a financial brain at this point, so it was like Aye. you need to come in and you know do some work around the ground or or, or as I said like paint and decorate and all that. I said I've played over a hundred games and you, you know I could have left a few times. I I've showed loyalty to the club and to you guys and you want me. To, come in with the rest of the boys that I've trained and played with and been picking their boots up and then. And paid no. stuff. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. He says, well, you need to earn your money somehow. So it was like, it got to the stage where I had to get the PFA involved, phrase of wish it and stuff. And I didn't want to do that. You know, but I don't think Thistle handled it the way they should have done at that point. Mm. I'm not saying they pay me the year's wages. I know things... They're, they're what, are you in accounting or something now, you know? <laughs> no, no. Something uh, like that. I work, I, work in, I work in finance, so... Basically, when I retired, I took a. I didn't know what to do. I'd only, as you know from my story, I'd only been football since I was twelve. I, I left school at sixteen. I didn't bother with my GCSEs when I probably should have done. My results were terrible when I think back because well, I didn't try a leg because I knew I was constrained to football, Aye. which is wrong. Aye. So, but it was one of them. I, I knew, you know, I was going to do that. So, rightly or wrongly, I didn't try a leg. So my results were shit. So, I didn't train in anything, and it was one of them. What am I going to do? So I ended up. I applied for a job with RBS at that time. I thought it was actually a Thistle fan that put me on to them. Um, there you go. I know. So it was a wee contact. I, put on. I had an interview and a woman was like that looking at me and uh, she offered me the job. 13 grand a year. Um, shite. So I'd gone from that money. It was headset, a bit like this, headset on and just Aye. selling loans. I was, you know, I had to do it because I'd, my daughter Olivia, who's 15 now, was two yeah. at the time and I, I was married at the time. To my ex-wife, <laughs> so um, you know it was one of them. I had a family to support, mortgage, and I thought I just need to do it. I just need to. I can't Aye, be big, pay the big bills, time. Mate. I had to pay. The, I can't be big time. I didn't. Earn, you know, I, I earned decent money, but I was one of them. It just fucking spent it. You know, it gave me good experience, and then I'm working for a great company now. Uh, I don't know if we can mention their name, but Aye. You know, Aye. Aye, so so Channel Finance, and uh, we we do. Commercial funding, mortgages, and mortgage protection. Oh, uh, I'm a mortgage, mate. There you go, mate. I'll sort you out. Good deal. I'm self employed <laughs> as well, so you need no to hear me here, mate, telling no you it's hard going, man. I've, all these I experiences I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> all these experiences I've learned over the years, mate. I'll, I'll sort you out. Right, okay. Uh, so, uh, so it's owned by a guy, Michael Savage, who used to be Albion Rovers chairman, so he was involved in yep, football. I know, Michael. Aye. Aye, all right, cool. And uh, he's a great guy. And Bobby Gracie is a chief exec. So Bobby was at Clyde. <laughs> and, uh, I was at Clyde, actually. So there's a football connection there. So I, I went for an interview with him. I hadn't met. I knew Bobby. Sorry, I knew Bobby from years ago. But I, you know, I didn't know him that well. It was just he used to be the tie up in the boardroom when I was getting my man of the match awards and play the year awards. He used to, he used to uh, award them to me. But you know, I went for <laughs> I, I went for an interview with him and. Um, they offered me a job and it was great. And we just started talking about football in my career. And then they talked about what they'd done. And then uh, maybe a pathway for, for players, ex-players, part-time players that we think with me heading up because of my history and the story nice I just told you. Um, that might help people. So rather than me uh, you know, taking somebody 10 years to get into a, a fairly average position, which I'm in now with good hopes for the future, 
no take the ten year. They've got a pathway straight away to get their qualifications. Aye, there's options there, and the years finish. There's options there. Yeah, because at Brilliant. the moment, uh, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a good idea because I mean, I don't know too. Obviously, I've been at the game from you know twelve, fifteen years, but I still speak to a lot of people within the game. My best mate's manager of a Lowland League club. Uh, you know, I still speak to Craig's and, and St- uh, Stephen Craig and these guys. And good I know, day. I know, still, I know people Great in the game. Stephen Craig and I think he's an arsehole. I will, mate. He's, <laughs> he, de- he denies he's a good Rangers man, but he's he's very uh, he's, he's, ve- he's very he's very neutral. Craig. The only thing he's missing is a fucking foot. <laughs> Have you not seen it? No. Oh. <laughs> you're the one to fucking cut out who you work for too when you're talking about flutes, you are fucking you I know. You're a wee right. Sitting there every week with his fucking Celtic tap No, you're right. <laughs> no, he's you're a Man United fan or something. So, no, I so, but there's, there's no much, from my knowledge anyway, help for players in terms of when they retire or think they retire or part-time players who are earning 50 quid, 100 pounds, 200 pounds a week, play their football and then they work in a... Aye. You know, Aye. anywhere, and, and no of any qualifications. So our plan is to... Just to, to help maybe, people and give them a chance when their careers come to an end. That's yeah. help there. That's even, a brilliant, that's a even, yeah, doing. even bring them in when they're still playing, because they'll have a, a large fan base, you know, and they'll have a lot of contacts Aye. there that they can still tap into while they're still kind of relevant at that time. Aye. So with their Instagrams and their... their Facebooks, etc. So they could get their qualifications and play on a Saturday, and then they've got something when they retire, and we would help them with, you know. So that's the idea behind it. That's a great now, idea. Now we, know how to, now we know how to get in contact with them. We're needing somebody for the Legends Lottery and all. Because you've got <laughs> you've got all these retired footballers in your in your phone book. <laughs> I have it. I have, I've got plenty, so uh, I'll get a few. Jamie, honestly, me, it's been an absolute blind in a story, man. Uh, honestly, I has been on me. Been one of the best. best. Really has, really has been me. so insightful, honestly. I swear to God, it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's been it's great the best legend the story we've had, mate. I appreciate uh, it. Thanks, thanks for sharing that, all that stuff for you, honestly. Love it, it's been brilliant. Love it. Thank you very much. Right, Take see care, Jamie. Right. Bye-bye. 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 Right, troops, there we go. I delivered this week, finally. Legends Lottery. Well done, me man. Belter as well. It was a good one, man. That was the best Legends Lottery. Nado, yeah. it's on to you next, mate. Uh, cookie cookies. Back, yeah, I'm still going with Joe Tortellano for the best one. <laughs> <laughs> he was good. Who, do I, who, who is my guy for next week? John's on the rules. There are new rules for this, boys, because uh, obviously we're in a time of lockdown and beforehand we were drawing names out and it ended up that we're just getting people on. So here are the new rules, right? The rules are that you can get on any cult footballer from any club ever, right? Right. But the point system's going to be different, Okay. The listeners are going to decide how good the guest is. So right. then, once we've got them yeah, on... You, you can't do that, man, because if, if the listeners say the guest shite, then the guest's well, going to be like, ah, ah, ah. That's the rules. So, basically... <laughs> right, the, I've got it. The listener comes on, and then out of five, it. the listeners will rate how guest, good the guest was, and then those points will be awarded on the next show. Great. So, is that all? Right, okay. That's better. Oh, wait a minute. All the Rangers supporters are going to say that my guess is right. No, but all the Celtic supporters are going to say that the two boys... Who says the cult heroes need... No. Hey. No, it doesn't have to be hey. Rangers or Celtic. We've had just Jimmy hey. Mitchell on there who's been quite Partick Thistle. We had Ross Hamilton from Steny and Hour last week. No, that's not the point I'm making. What I'm saying is the Celtic supporters are going to side with me. The Rangers supporters are going to say... It's a fucking game on a podcast. You're not losing money, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Show me a fucking right. idiot again. I'll take the job clean off you, fucking dick. All right? Hey, Grado, it's only you next week, big chat. Grado, you're up first. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you're getting battered off, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there raging there, I can tell. Look what he's got. It's now time for our Beer 52 teaser for your chance to win a case of beer. All that you need to do is answer the question we've put to you. Last week, we asked you to guess the footballer from this clue. I scored 18 goals at Highbury. I have got a Premiership winner's medal and I'm still playing in the Premiership. Who am I? It was a bit of a trick question, as the answer is... Jamie Vardy. 
Is Fleetwood Stadium's <laughs> also called Highbury? <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> and the winner is Josh Henry. Well done, Josh, big man. You could be me, but I'm calling you big this week. Uh, so <laughs> this week, it's no tricks here. It's just simply named three out of the six Brazilians that have played in Scotland. Now, there's I one for you. You can I, 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 by I, I, comment I, 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 on the link in the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your score to football at Football Daft Pod. It's not a score, but it's an answer. You know what I mean? Winners must be over 18 and stay in the UK. And you can get free beer for Beer 52 as well. It's a monthly subscription service for beer, which they source from all over the world, from all the greatest small batch bash breweries, all the small batch breweries around the world. They get cases every month. Previous themes have including Germany ones, South African ones, Korean, New Zealand, and many more. All you need today is go to beer52.com forward slash daft, and we can sort you out with free beers if you just cover the full 95 postage. You normally get eight, but as you're a football daft listener, we will give you two extra free beers. That's a total of 10 free beers to keep you going through this lockdown. So just go to beer52.com forward slash daft. That's the world's beer in a case. And the number's 5and2.com. So remember that, beer52.com, beer52.com forward slash staff to get your first case of 10 beers for absolutely zilch. Let's welcome to the show a former St. Mullen Celtic and West Ham star. Not even a star, he's a legend. In his career, he scored over 140 goals. He got himself five cats for Scotland. And not only is he a top guy, he's also a top shagger. <laughs> <laughs> Walls are buds. It's Frank, Mas- Ma- Frank McAvery. You must be pissed off listening to that. Nah, it's all right. I don't mind. You know me. We made, made me Johnny a fortune, but never mind. I do, uh, do you know what? You, you you said something once, and I take I take it off you, right? Because see, when people say to me, it's yourself, I got something off you, right? Because somebody went like that to you. Where's the birds? You went, I've not heard that in five minutes. So see, <laughs> anybody says, anybody says it's your say, I go, I've not heard that in five minutes. <laughs> I know, everyone thinks they're the only one that says it to you. you know, you're like, yeah, they do. I know. Uh, it's like fucking Victor Meldrew in Father Ted when he says a book, <laughs> kind of about Father Ted says a book. Nah, I don't him. believe it. I don't believe it. You know I mean? <laughs> How's lockdown keeping keeping you, big man? Good. I'm keeping all right. Apart for this this meltdown, I don't, I don't call it a lockdown. It's a meltdown, isn't it? <laughs> fucking right. It's horrible. Climbing the walls, mate, isn't it? Oh, well, it's like Groundhog Day. I just take a dog out and get a good walk. Once, once, I hope. Oh, I. Aye, aye, just once. Aye, you've got, I remember, because I remember you've, you've got a big dog, haven't you? Aye, aye. Aye, because I was saying, I remember, I remember, maybe we'd done a wee advert for some, I can't remember what it was. That was a while ago, it was my little dog, I had that, he passed on now. He's oh, a boy. Oh, wait, I wait, Rainbow Sky. He's only two, and he's, um, oh, a wee cracker. Out, out energetic there. So. Aye, yeah, aye. It's, it's why, we're, we're dogs sitting in the room for my mother-in-law, and she's got a big chow. So aye. we're watching the dog during lockdown. <laughs> that's why I've got a chow in all, mate. Thank fuck, but because it gives you something today. Getting the dog out a walk aye. in the morning, it's brilliant. Getting up, just going a walk. Uh, the field, that's the, the biggest thing, Stephen. But they, but the dogs, they don't care. They need to get out. So ah, they didn't get out. They didn't. I, I remember we done a chat. It was a charity hang, and it was like I, I can't remember what it was. Was it you? Were you dressed as Santa, or the goalie was dressed as Santa? And I had to pop up <laughs> with two bottles, of wet, wet, with two 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 glasses of red wine, right? I and the, the, the woman directing it went no. These want Ribena in this, or these want red yeah. wine. And I thought, I use fucking daft the goalie, the front mark of him. It's fucking hilarious, by the way. Uh, it was, it really, really was. The wee woman didn't know about the look, did she? Again, again, it was proud, it was proud. So let's start about your, your Korean fit, but how did you, I mean, you must be pissed off for answering half these questions, but you do every weekend, I mean, you, you're out every weekend still doing the talks, you're the number oh, one guy, yeah. I've saw you about a million times doing your talks and addressing the fucking Inverness, mm. the full, all the place, you're, you're kept dead busy, but um, how did you get starting football? I was, I did hear my, my top, but it was, it was very lucky grade. I was, you know, I was, everyone, I was, I was a Celtic supporter for a wee boy. My dad used to take me, you know, home and away and all that. And I loved it. I loved going, getting lifted over the turnstiles and all that. So I was a proper supporter. And then um, the Celtic game cancelled, walked through the town unemployed. And some of my mates were there and asked me to go and play football. And <laughs> the wee guy that I was playing against, 
there was five scouts watching him. So <laughs> I bollocks his life up, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Frank McAvenny, for coming on the show. You've been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> You've done great. Delicious. Who's just walked into the room? Hey, Sharon, thanks for having me on, lads. <laughs> I love that top. Me, man. That's a pretty <laughs> top. That's my jersey. Good, man. Say that again, mate. That's my jersey. That's the only time they wore that. On the ones they wore that crack cross. It's the first I know, time they I was going to get my Cavani on the blanket, but my shoulders aren't wide enough, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Just put Maka, everyone knows it. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to you, you, I was at a sportsman stand you were doing last year during Cope Bridge Bowling Club. Oh, aye. Mind you called somebody a midget and then you turned around and apologised to me. Can you see that? I was sitting right next to you, you bastard. <laughs> I know. Sorry, we man. <laughs> so, Tool, you must, you must want to have a hundred questions you want to ask, Mark. Um, There's a hero. Come on. Fucking honest to God, man. It's Mark. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if I've, if, if I've went over a right, but what a career you've had! Right, you've you've been almost the top scorer in England the year that none of it was televised or anything like that. Mm. So, do you feel as if like a, a big part of your kind of stardom gets stolen nah. because you won me on the telly all the time? Nah. You have... He was. He was a David Beckham. You were. Nah, part I was. Of you. Listen, I was. I, I was. <laughs> I was the only one. I used to go. I used to get any papers for. The, on the front pages rather than the back pages, but it was because right. uh, I, I, I never let I never let anything in my football life, you know. So I I, you can't it. exactly shag a fucking supermodel on the I pitch. Myself. Man. But I, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> just the one. Just the one. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a good lesson of the good life, but it was it was one name. I went down, you know what? I went down to England because it was the best players. They were the best players at the time. They were down there. They were all down there. Liverpool were European champions. Mm. And if you wanted to play football, that's where you want to go. You might try to sell against the best. It wasn't a bit of money. Aye. I just went down there because obviously Celtic never came in for me. <laughs> and and uh, it was the best thing to do. I, I got a couple of offers and I went, ended up at West Ham. And it was, uh, listen, West Ham played football the way I wanted to play football. So, um, St. Murn were the same. They were they made a great team at St. Murn before I left. You know, Tony Fitzpatrick, Lex Richardson, and all that, and Billy Stark. And, McDougal, we had a great team, honestly, it's a man. So I, I was educated for four or five seasons in the uh, in the way that football should be played. So when I'm doing at West Ham, it was you you like this great on my first day at West Ham training. And right. uh, you know how up here all the days run for three weeks or something like that. You just don't get a ball. You just run. Everybody runs around hills and all that kind of nonsense up and down. Hey. Didn't they have the gear? They gave me a ball in the first morning of training and I thought. You know, I thought it was, it was a wind-up. And he says, what's the matter with you? I said, in Scotland, you don't get a ball for at least two weeks. He says, no. He says, John Lyle, the manager, says, that's the tools of your trade. Right. And it, honest to God, incredible how it was. Because you, you lose your touch, don't you? Aye, so right. so he, just, right. he says, don't worry, you're running this afternoon. I was like, right, cheers. So <laughs> it was all right. But that was, I loved it down there. I loved going out. But I never, as I say, I never let it. You know, I've heard all the stories, Grady. You, you know what I'm saying. It's, I've heard all the stories about... I've done everything, but I couldn't have done half the things I'm supposed to have done and played football the way I did. Well, that's what they say. You know, they say the same thing about, the thing about Gaza, you know, Aye. because he's naive. You know what I'm saying? You're naive, big man. But do you know what I'm saying? The, the likes yeah. are, you, you know, know means. he's no, he, <laughs> no, in fact, it was, it's no naivety. I'm getting my words. I know, I know. Vulnerable, vulnerability. That, that kind of thing. That Don't made you who not. you were. Do you know what I mean? And I, I remember watching a documentary about you one night. It must have been about three bells in the morning. Uh, one of the YouTube wormholes. Where you go for watching how Easter eggs are made to fucking... How pencils are to be... To how uh, Frank McAvenny was basically the first guy, first football player to become the guy that was in the front pages rather than the back pages. I, know, I, I go pals with all the boys. Then Peter Stringfield was a good pal. I mean, he was great. He was great to me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, Peter... You learn a lot from people like you walk in and everyone says it's on the booze all the time. You used to walk about with a champagne glass and it was just right. full of water. Is that right? You no, know, and just walk about and you know, where where else could I have where else could I have went and got introduced to Jack Nicholson 
Um, Jude Law. Oh, no way. Johnny Depp. Jack Nicholson. Jack yeah, Nicholson, man. Yeah. It, was, it was brilliant. Me, man, it was great. Don't get to meet the Queen, no. Didn't have a, didn't have a clue who I was, but I know who he <laughs> was. That was enough. <laughs> I'm saying, did you, not, did you not get to meet the Queen, no? She came out my first day. She was, <laughs> I never met her. She <laughs> drove by me. I got a drive-by. <laughs> 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 it was good, it was all right, John. John, so when I went to West Ham, it was great because, you know, the, the football, as I say, the, the football was great. And the first seven games, we never done too well. We knew we had a good team, but we just didn't click. And uh, we had a meeting with the players. Just name management, just all the players got together and called a few people, you know, called them out sort of things. So the boys that were lazy. And, and then we went in an 18-game unbeaten run at West Ham, which was for West Ham was, was magnificent, and the, the football that we played, to be fair, it was it was different class. It used, that team that you played in, Frank, is considered probably one of the greatest West Ham teams of all Aye. time. We should have you won. Know? I mean, I know we finished third, but this is how close it was. On, this, on the last game of the season, if we had beat, we were away at West Brom, we had to beat West Brom. If, if Chelsea had drawn with Liverpool at Stamford Bridge, we'd have won the league on Monday. That's how close it was. Wow, man. And Kenny Douglas scored with two minutes to go or something. You're joking, too. <laughs> so, so I wasn't too happy. So we had to play Everton on Monday. Um, but I didn't want to play it, to be honest with you. You know, second or third didn't mean nothing to me. Aye. You know, so... You played You played up front with Tony Cotty, didn't you? Everton were used to it. They were, they were there more times than us. Eh? <laughs> Tony Cotty, you and him were up front together, weren't you? Aye, so far as the last time, man, we scored 50-odd goals. I mean, we all have played a couple of seasons, we scored like over 100 goals with Phoenix, so we've done, we done well. By you mean? Tony, best finisher, best finisher ever. You know, when I went down there, it was, it was Tony, all Tony wanted to do was score goals. He didn't Aye. want to run, he didn't want to get involved, and then he build up. And uh, so when I went down there, it all changed because I had to go up and, and that was when they had the meeting. And I'm saying, look, if I go and have it, you know, that's, see this thing that they're doing nowadays, you know, high press and all that. Stuff we done that in the 80s, and I was a trigger. John says, I'm a trigger when I go, everyone just goes, shuts people down so they can't get an easy pass, and that's how it went. It was, and we just went, and you know, you see Liverpool, Man City, and all that doing it now. We done it way back in the 80s, it was great. Mm. I mean, the good defense which made a difference, Grady. You know, it's like you've got to have a good defense. Oh, you've got to have a good defense, big and a good goalie. I know, okay, I'm saying, we had big parks, big parks. Big parks was, <laughs> Frank, she looking back. She looking back on. Six foot nine. <laughs> Fucking hell, six foot nine. Oh, he's a big lad, big parts. He, that's only his hands I'm talking about. He could have been a wrestler, <laughs> then, eh? You know the gloves that you wear, you lad. <laughs> <laughs> that was parts. Of. I could, I, I could have used his gloves for a sleeping bag, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just did one finger. <laughs> I don't think it's true. Going back, going back to what you're saying now. Going back to what you're saying there about uh, your, your strike partnership with Tony Cotty. Yes. 100 goals in two seasons in the English and the, the top league in England. Two and, and a half, it was two and a half seasons, I something like that. Frank, you're seeing nowadays, man, you're looking at you're looking at yourself as a hundred million pound striker. But we're, the, but we're the last strikers to score 20 goals, two strikers. They, they very seldom play two strikers now. I, I don't know why, because a couple of years ago, Leicester played 4-4-2, won the league. Won the league. Could handle it. Nobody could handle it. You know, you put two player, two strikers against the defenders nowadays, they're no used to it. They're just so indoctrinated by one striker because they all want to play football. When you've got two strikers going to burn down in time, that was somebody. Defenders don't like it, I don't care how good they are. Aye. That's, how, that's how Leicester done it, you know. So it was brilliant to watch. We and spoke then, about that. Liverpool's doing it. Liverpool's doing it now and they don't get three strikers. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. We spoke about that before on here. I mean, the strike partnership seems to be a lost start. You don't, you don't ever hear a, a strike painting anymore, no, don't you? Not you. No, well, like, it, was like, it was all. It was Douglas and Rush at Liverpool. I mean, what a partnership it was. Me and Tony. Um, at, at Chelsea, it was David Speedy and, and Kerry Dixon. You know, and it was and it was Sharp and Lineker at Everton. So it was. Listen, it was brilliant the, the way it all went. But ah, they need Joe Gardner and Martin Lycon, put that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely you... not, Mendel. I, I can fully agree with you there. They were not Joe Garner and Martin Wyckham. <laughs> Marka, yes. yeah, there's something in producer's notes here about you maybe getting a chance to sign for Rangers at one point. Well, it's, it's well known. I, I, I shared the room I didn't with didn't know him. that. I shared the room with Sunnis when he was going to go at the World Cup. And he was telling me that 
he told me before then, before he'd done it, that it was, it was taking, obviously they were in the process of buying Rangers. And, uh, and he told me that Fergie would drop him one of the games as well. well how good is that? He says he's going to drop me. I says, because Fergie at the time wanted the Rangers job. Because right. he wasn't at Man United at that time. Aye. Aye. So there was a problem. And, and the one game, <laughs> the one game that he should have played soonest was against Uruguay. I mean, I can't understand why he never played them against Uruguay. The one game you would want soonest in your team. To play, aye. I mean, and it, what a play it was. I mean, soon as, listen, what a play. But he was saying to me, would you come, when I buy Rangers, would you come to Rangers? I said, no. I said, and they don't, you know me, it's not about religion or nothing. I'm just no. a Celtic supporter. Ah, exactly. You know, my That's family, you grew up. My, my family was, I would, I, would, I would hurt my family in Merlin. I'm, I'm big enough to take anything, but, you know, my, my dad used to take me and go with the priests and write the games. <laughs> Aye. 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 You, you <laughs> seen, you, you jump, you jump through the gates, it's, you know <laughs> I mean? The fences and all that. that I, I mean, that, that's built into you. I know, what what I, I, just, I said to him, you know, no, and then he, he made an approach, he, he phoned John Lyle at West Ham, and, and I said to him, tell me he's a million pound, because he told me he didn't money. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, tell me he gave him a million pound, and he, no, he never had it, so. But we do this, I mean, Mo signed, so that was all right. <laughs> 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 you, when you look at, not in all seriousness, but see, when you look at it, could you imagine the fucking life you would have had to have led? Uh, it wouldn't have been bad for me, wee man, because... The thing is, I hadn't been at Celtic I hadn't been at Celtic, yeah, right enough, I, right. Been, I just didn't want, I mean, it was not none against Rangers, and I just didn't want to say anything, because I was a Celtic support. Because you're mm. a Celtic man, that's that. That's, that's you know, that's what I went down, when I went back down, when I left Celtic, I went back down to West Ham. The second time, I went to Arsenal, and I couldn't do it, because the West Ham fans took to me, and, you know, and I thought they were brilliant, so... I'm just loyal that way, and I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. I see, that's what's missing for Fipper these days, but, Mark, you know that yourself. Aye. They don't get that's, that brings a bit, that brings a bit of money. I can, got, can you imagine me in a dressing room, Greg? People are walking in with earphones and I know talking to each other. <laughs> Again, oh, they've been they the last, they've been the last two minutes. Aye, uh, exactly. Too much, too much money in football now, man. It's I ruined all the young There's always money. I mean, I mean, in '91, I honestly thought, what well, Gaza was the best player in the world at that time. Remember, '90, early '90s. I thought it was Aye. magnificent. Need come up here. I mean. The boys nowadays, young boys nowadays, they're seeing all these, all these players now and think it's great and all that. And I'm thinking, see if you go back a few years, the amount of talent that was in Scottish football. Oh, you know, phenomenal. Gaza, Loudrop, De Canio. Reggie Blinker. Henry, you know, <laughs> Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's Reggie or Bobby Pettern the same. We could put the two of them in the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine Combuari. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shite. <laughs> that's that's Frank, see you. When you moved to Celtic, did you yes. feel a lot of pressure on your shoulders? Obviously, you're a Celtic man, your family well, and all that. A, well, me as a Celtic supporter, when they came in for me, it was like, I thought they, I thought Charlie Nicholas was going back. I thought he was going back, so, and I, I was uh, brilliant, you know. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't see it coming, it was just that last minute, and I didn't know until after that the big bully fought for me. Because the board wanted Charlie, because he was cheap, he was for nothing, wasn't he? And right. it was all board. So, it wasn't it was a... The, the, the machine that, that Celtic is now, you know. Mm-hmm. Aye. It was, um, it was the old board that were twitching can turn styles off and all that kind of stuff, you know, allegedly. <laughs> and so, oh. it was, uh, but it was them, and Big Bully fought for me. And uh, he says he went to me. And, and it, was, it was good because it was, there was three strikers, me, Andy, and, and Mark McGee. So we just, you know, they two rotated and I played with any one of them. <laughs> Aye, but how does it feel when you, when you sign for, for your, oh, for your kid, boyhood, your boyhood <laughs> heroes? It was brilliant when I, you know, the biggest, this is the biggest thing for me. See, when my first game was against um, Hibs on a Saturday and Big Bullies held me back and I, you know, I'm quite, you know, believe it or not, I'm quite, I wanted to go with the team. I just wanted to go out and soak up the atmosphere. Aye. Mm-hmm. Bully would never let me out and he says, no, you're not going out. He says, you do it on your own. And I'm like, because it was a high signing and never made the biggest signing. And I said, it was nothing. I mean, can you think about it here on a grand, it's nothing. No, you wouldn't get naked yeah. for that. So, um, and I'm thinking, I'm shaking myself, and I'm like, oh. and then he says, right, on you going? As I, as I walked to the dressing room, walked across the path to go to the tunnel, wee Jimmy appeared, wee Jimmy Johnson appeared, and he came come away, his way, to come down and see me, and he gave me a cud, he said, just go and enjoy yourself, and I was like, oh, you know, he said, wee man, actually, and I was, I was, I was <laughs> he's here, and I'm up there, you know, <laughs> he said, just go and enjoy yourself, wee man, and I thought, you know what, that's what, that's what big clubs, Celtic, and that's all about, because, Jimmy's been, he's been, he's came for upstairs hospitality, I came away downstairs and got me before I went out, just to, to wish me all the best, and I thought, it's brilliant, job. you know, it was, it was great. You don't get that now, I mean, can you imagine the players nowadays, they just don't care about anybody else, do they? give a fuck. Oh, no, no. Your, name, 
You're absolutely right when you say that, wee man. Anyway, so... <laughs> 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 so Frank, take me back to Hamden the last two minutes. Yes. Talk well, to me. Do you know what? It was <laughs> to be honest, in the semi final I had the biggest nightmare I've ever had in a football park. I was terrible in the semi final. And uh and I, I you know, luckily I, I loved the bond Henry. Henry Smith dropped it. So that was a good uh, we got to the final and and I, I just made sure that I was gonna do something. But it was it was a good game to be honest with you. Dundee United were a right good team. Aye. But there was 14 minutes to go some and I, and I scored the equaliser and I thought, you know, you actually see me seeing it Pomwich Day. Let's get a winner. Because we knew that we just we just didn't know how to beat that team that season. So it was um it was incredible. And and we go it and well worked free free uh, corner and it was uh, Joe Miller miskicked it. Starkey miskicked it and I shinned it top corner, probably. <laughs> How you do? And see that, see that celebration when you just drop to your knees and put your Aye. hand on well, I realize, Once I scored, you realise the, the magnitude of what you've done. It's a centenary. I knew that when I was coming up. So to do that, for, especially for the gaffer, because he was, you know, he was, he was everything to me. You know what? That's, uh, that Celtic team, my, dad lived, uh, my dad's lived through the Lisbon lines and all that. Uh-huh. And that Celtic team is my dad's favourite Celtic team. He says, just like you said there, even if say, like, we're 2-0 down with uh-huh. five minutes left, you, you didn't have any worries. Yeah, you nobody knew. left, that's for sure. That, that's, you know. it's, it's, that's the mark of champions. And, mm. you know, like, having scored in that final goal in, in the last minute of the cup mm. final in the centenary year, he uh-huh. confirmed the double man. Yeah, but then it, you get the anti-climax time. after it, we man, and they take it to Park Head, and it was all yeah. this crap. Can shake champagne for Celtic and all that. You're like, oh, you can't <laughs> drink her. Uh, you're you're, just, no, you're just you're just in the one string fellas, aren't you? It was, it was horrible. You couldn't drink it. Was let's go, boys. We end up we end up Tommy Bunsey's house. So it was good. <laughs> uh, that was that was a game when when uh, sorry, I think it was maybe the season after when Tommy done that famous interview after the game and. And he says, look at them, they're here and they're always here and you fight for a cause and all that. And see that that's that's ingrained into Celtic's folklore now, man. What a what an experience it must have been being part of that. Honestly. Well, it's one of them. I mean, I was I was the cup after the cup final blue week, Tommy's Tommy's in the party. I'm going to smart he was nearly in tears and I'm saying, Smart he's saying that she's a hundred years people remember us and I'm like, ah, you know, you don't I was just you know what, I just, I just want to get out and, and then you, when he says things like that, you, you, you know, it just takes you back a wee bit and you think, shit, mm. you know, the magnitude of the things that you've done, uh, especially last season, because let's be honest, there's no way we should beat Rangers that year because the team that Rangers had were just, that was the start of that, they were magnificent, that, you know. Some of the, and the money we'd spent and all that as well, oh, for used to do that. You know, that, you know, you know, Frank. They never, had, they never had any money for you, but they had money for fucking Chris Wood. You know all that, didn't they? Bastard. Speaking of Chris Wood, did he know? Did he know what you're doing, no? No, fear. I'll be fucking sending Bitcoin. Somebody said you're too much. They were just asking me what Papa was going to. Frank, I swear, go with Chris Wood and Terry Butcher, man. Terry Butcher, Jim Roberts, I know, fear him. That's the reason that they couldn't even beat us in court. Me and Bob are sitting here like a fart in a trance for these Celtic Cup final questions and that. Aye, 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 totally, totally. I tell, I tell you what, then let's talk about something that the boys can talk about. How much do you hate Jonathan Watson? I've got some for you, Grado. Who scored the goal in the Cup final when Celtic, when Celtic beat the match 7 1? Who scored the Rangers goal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, trust me, I, I, I was supposed to go on a Celtic tour one time. That's what he spoke about it. Seven in the sun or some shit. I can't remember. I don't know. I'm the, in the sun, brother. Aye, whatever well, it was. Aye, aye. I'm not even here anymore. This has just been paused. I'm at the back doing the garden now. <laughs> 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 How do anyway, you fucking eject this? Eject, this, eject. This is great. I'm loving it this week. My fucking broadband's <laughs> playing up. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, it's all good fun. But you know what? In the days, it was great. It was, it was even good after it, Grado. Because it used to good me up at Coy and Durant. It was brilliant. Good fun. Aye. Aye. You know, we, kicked, we kicked the living daylights. We kicked the crap with each other in a game. You know, there was no love lost in the game. But after it, we all go for a beer. And that was, it. That was what it was like. And that's what's missing that's as well in the football. Probably in the yeah. as well, isn't it? I mean, you can imagine all the people don't drink now. People don't drink. 
At least when I go into pre season, at least I know I'm going to sweat and I'm going to get hot. <laughs> Boys are super fat. You know, what's the point? <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get well, it. Well, listen, Frank. Yeah. See, when, see once you, you, left, you left Chelsea, you went back down to England and all that, yeah. but somehow in 1992, you end up in China. How the fuck did that hey, come up? How the fuck did you cope there? Did they do sweet and sour Hong Kong stay well there? Yeah, I'll tell you what it was. I only had an episode in China. There was a couple, big Alan McKnight who played with Celtic. He was over there. And he phoned me up and he says, would you come to Hong Kong? It's not China, it was Hong Kong. And I'm thinking, oh, oh, I could do that. And the, the money was good. So I went early on and I says, well, I'll sing for a couple of months and see how it goes. Because I'd never, never been to Hong Kong. So I said, I want to put in a, I want to put in a hotel, not a five-star hotel, not that kind of nonsense, not that. It's all good. And I went out there and the football was shite. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a fork? What? Did you get a fork? Or did you need to learn with these sticks? I didn't. I was going more right with the sticks. I'm good. I used to eat a lot of Chinese. So I'm all right. All right. Chinese woman taught me. But listen, <laughs> we're, in, we're in there. And the biggest problem, they've got a golf range where South China play, where they train. They've got a golf range. So you have the train at 8 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, or 4 o'clock to 6. And it's on the driving range for the rest of the day. If you know half a pitch for 10 o'clock, fucking golf boys fly out of your head. <laughs> you all had to run through. You had to go, nah, 10 to 10, everyone stops and get off because these golf boys, you know, they don't care. And it was good fun. And I loved it. But after a while, I said, look, I can't do this. And you know the biggest problem I had? They don't blame drink if you have a bad game. So you can drink the night before. You can drink the night before and they'll not blame the drink. And I'm thinking, oh, I love that. But nah, that wasn't good for me. <laughs> that wasn't good for me. So I came back to sign for Partick Thistle. That's what I came back for. I was what, year say, was that? what year was that, Marker? 91, 92. Was it 93? Right. So, 92. So, 92. 92. Who's the guy for then? I'm on the pitch with a thistle tap on. Don't have any more Johnson. I'm on the, I'm on the thistle, the foothold centre circle with a thistle tap on with John Lambie. I'd left Hong Kong that hurry, much a hurry. I never paid a £200 phone bill, right? <laughs> but they paid me 17 grand to leave. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I never thought about it. So they paid me this money to leave. I'm standing in the centre circle. I couldn't sign from because they never released my registration form. So Thistle sent a £240 to Hong Kong, right? Wire transfer, got it done. My, my registration would be through in the following day. So they said, just get the photos. And I says, right, okay. I'm standing in the centre circle with my phone rings. My agent's secretary phone ring. I'm going to talk to you now. So I'm all right, Chippy. He says, uh, have you seen you? I said, no, I'm not seen you. He says, where are you? He says, send a circle for her. He says, definitely not seen you. I said, why? He says, why? Come back to Celtic. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I've got, I've got all the TV crews in front. I've got 10 photographers all there. We're going to set a circle. Stop, like, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I've, got thistle, I've got a thistle tap on. And he couldn't stop laughing. And uh, he says, well, see you, Parky, Daniel. And I went, right, lads, I'll do me. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> John, John, John Landy tried to sue me. But anyway. Oh, I bet, I bet you went off his nuts. I bet you, John Landy went whatever? absolute bonkers. Oh, he went, he went nuts. Aye. Did he speak to you on the phone or whatever? Or? No, I never spoke to him. He was on the papers with me. He bombed with Murdo, got a brownie. Yeah, he got a brownie. But, but we went, I went with Celtic to Fur Hall just, just before Christmas. <laughs> and uh, they come in and announcement. We'd like to wish everyone in Celtic a uh, happy Christmas and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Apart from Frank Mack. Frank Mack, Merry. <laughs> <laughs> And beat him one now, you know who scored the goal. I don't take penalties, but I took it that day. Um, and beat him one now, so Brilliant. you know me. I love white winding people up. So how was your second spell Celtic? It's all right until until uh, Loudrop signed. Uh, Lou Lou McCarry came, but that was horrible when he came in because we uh, both. Frank, one of one of my So it was a good, it wasn't a good start, you know. But listen, I I, I got. A, I got a broken bone in my foot and Celtic sent me for a scan. I couldn't, couldn't see it, but I had to get, I know they sent me for an x-ray and they couldn't pick it up. I knew there was something wrong with me. In my last game that I played, I said, I'm going to get this fixed. There's something wrong with me. I was getting injections, though, you know, getting the injections in my ankle. What was one? It was just the number, it only lasted about an hour. 
And uh, we played one of the best games I've ever played in. It was the same final of the Cup, playing against Rangers. They had to toss a coin because Hamden was getting renovated, wasn't it? They had to toss a coin to see what, what pitch they used, and it was Ibrox. When I mean, you walk through the Ibrox, it was half green and white and half blue and white. It was unbelievable, the atmosphere you can imagine. You know, so that was my last game. We could beat one now. We Janic scored in there. We could beat one now, and I said, Look, I've got to get this fixed. Went for a scan. And it was a broken bone in my foot, it was a fracture in my bone. So I knew there was some knowledge weeks. I was, I mean, five weeks I was getting injections in my ankle and all that. So it never done me any good, really. But in these days, that's what you've done. You just got an injection, you played. You know, you uh, never thought, you never you thought. Know, it was are we hoffing you? Are we hoffing yeah. you before the game, no? No, no, no. No, I couldn't do that. They've done it with Sam. Billy Boys like to be a wee brandy. <laughs> But it just didn't want my mum. I thought it was a drink he was having. I'm thinking, I can like this club. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I mean, after he gave me a drink before it, but no, nah, it was just a wee, wee nip to warm you up inside. So, <laughs> and uh, a lot of the boys did that, apparently. No, me. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. My career, listen, my career was good. It was, you know, people say to me, why do you not have more than five caps? Back in the day, the I'm delighted with five caps because the amount of people that I had to go up against, you know, Mojo. the amount of strikers, Mo, Charlie, Koiste, David Speedy, Graham, Sharp, Kendall Bush, I mean, fucking strikers, uh, Stevie Archibald. I mean, the fucking strikers was unbelievable. So for me to get that amount of games, he should have played me in the World Cup. He took me. I, I was the top goal right. scorer. And, uh, and then I never took one penalty that season. I scored 28 goals. And right. Lineker beat me by one goal and he took 12 penalties. So... That's just, you know, I was in fire. And as a striker, when you're, when you're confident, you know you're scoring every game. And Fergie never played me. And you can imagine me, I was not happy about it. But you don't have any regrets, do you? In I don't have any regrets, but I regret no playing the World Cup because he should have played me, you know. He should have, I think we'd have got through it the next stage if I was playing. You, you, ever, know, you ever seen him since? You ever spoke to him about it? I spoke to him, I spoke to him about 10 years later um, when I seen him at John Lyle Memorial. And I uh, didn't realise how what he'd done for John Lyle, so it was one of them, I, I love John Lyle, so I, I, I spoke to him, and he says, fucking hell, Frank, I thought you were dead. I says, ah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Bergen. He says, you sure? I says, no, he says, I thought I came to your funeral. I says, no, you want to get an invite. <laughs> so that was, uh, it was all right. Uh, he, he knew he made a mistake, because soon as, he shouldn't have dropped soon, he says, shouldn't have, you know, apparently Kenny never went because he never took Hansen. So, you know, we things like that, you think, well, that, that could have messed Aye. up, you know. Mm, but that could have messed everything up. But it was, listen, it was great just to get to the World Cup and score a goal that took us there, so that was even better. So Frank, you got an injury with uh, a bad injury, you broke your leg. Aye. And there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, like memes going about you now um, where people are copying Chris Kamara. Every time that pops up, he was the one that broke your leg. You must be like, he never broke my leg. He broke my leg, broke my ankle, and snapped my ligaments. You know, it was sweet. Oh, <laughs> it was sweet. I was it for. I was it for nearly. But people were asking me about it. Listen, nobody, nobody tries to hurt somebody like that. I think he tried not make that game. You know, that's what Chris. I would do. I wouldn't have done it, to Chris, because he wasn't that good. But you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 you, you saw that. You saw that ten the defender sent ten ten to go. For for the, the players that make good damage. So, in, in my respect, I should be happy about it. But, nah, it was just something they said to me in the way after part that was, you know, but he, but he didn't realise how bad it was. And uh, I can understand that, but the fans, because I was shouting at them, the fans took it. The fans took it that, you know, I, I was calling them a bring. But it wasn't, it was just the fact, you know, it wasn't because of the injury. It was just because of the moment. Once. Was it heat at the moment? Can I hang eye? Aye. Aye. We never, he never, there's no way he knew how bad it was. Aye. Aye. I was out. I was out for. I went to the hospital in Stoke. McCarry sent me to the hospital. Like right round, obviously he took me an ambulance. And then uh, McCarry says, "I just stay here." And I'm going, "I'm in Stoke, having a laugh." And the, I walked in. And the guy, Ray Stewart, was in the plane, and he came with me. And the guy says, "You'll never walk again. Properly, never mind play football." I says, "Who the fuck are you?" He says, "I'm a doctor." I says, "Piss off!" And I said, I, "I got." I said, "If somebody's going to finish my career, it'll be in England, doing in, doing in London, one of the top doctors." Aye. So I'd go to bus to come around and they strapped me up and they gave me all this trip and all that. And then um, I went down to London and they dropped me off at the they dropped me off at the hospital about I don't know, about eleven o'clock at night, private hospital, and I'm in the doctor come in about one and he says, nah, I'll fix it. I was like, I'm that fucking idiot, I'm stuck. 
He says it's actually an emergency. He says he wouldn't know what he was looking at. Fuck. So if I had to go to done there, if I had to go to done there, but that's that that's mental how you had the fucking the savvy to tell that guy to boost. Aye, honestly, I'd have just done it. Aye, I'd have finished him. Fucking hell, that's mad. Aye, me. I, I always thought a big Chris Kamara is a big jolly happy guy. Fuck that guy, by the way. No. Listen, he, he came through me. It was that late and I've even got a fill, ready, huh? He'd have got done now in the cameras. The cameras would have picked it up. But... Yeah, I would fuck him for that now, wouldn't Aye. they? Aye. Aye, he'd have been. But listen, I, I've, not, I've not got any hardship against the boy. It was one of them. I was annoyed at the beginning, but nah. We were men annoyed at McCarry. You know, because he, he done that, sent me there, and then I got the okay to start training Christmas Eve, and he got me in on Christmas Day and gave me a four-mile road run. Fuck. Really? And then my uncle just swallowed again, so I was just for another two and a half months, so, you know. Lou McCarry's got to be up there with the worst managers and so oh, By the way, no, he's training yeah, session. That. No, he's training session. His training session was, he's still on a line at the, at the byline. He got a ball each, kick it as high as he can. And you've only got one bounce to catch it before the halfway line. I was just training. Would I get a game for Celtic right now? <laughs> you could have kicked him about and caught him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, st- I'm starting to think Gredo could have been the fucking manager back then. Never mind. <laughs> no, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd have been the sub goalie. Oh, he was horrible. With the hey, zone. Your, your pal. Where your pal has won the World Championship, eh? Uh, big Drew, Big Drew McIntyre. Brilliant, aye. Brilliant, aye. He's, he's having a wee bit of a uh, uh, um, feud with Chris Sutton. I know, that's a bad way. I told her, uh, uh, I'll guarantee you Chris, Chris is no well that day. Something comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, feel, I feel for him because he'd normally get put out at Ibrox, not when he uh, applies, not because uh, he's well, we can't hear can, it now. Mark, that was a deal. I've not seen him in about uh, a year. And I says to him, he was met about the. I feel for him. He, we met about the, he was met about the European game. The who do we play? Lever was I it Lever Cousin? Lever Cousin. And um, yeah, he, he says to me, look, I'm doing a half time draw, and it was that morning Trump put the ban on cunts coming. Sorry, it was that morning that Trump put the ban on folk coming back to America. So mm-hmm. WWE says get back over here now, and he was mm-hmm. devastated, man, because he wanted to walk oh. out at Ibrox and all that. And I will see the thing is now, but Gredo, he gets to walk out at Ibrox as a WWE champion. Well, that's so, it. We've got a champion, like the the Rangers, man. Know what I mean? Mm. Aye. There's no money in them. <laughs> And I, I've, already, I've already booked me and his tour of Parkhead for when he's back home anyway. Ah. He's, not te- he's, not, he's telling me not to tell him, but I'm letting the cat out of the bag. Yeah, he's, he's too big for the trophy room, mate. Never get walking around now. There's too many trophies ah, in there. Big, <laughs> he's a big, but Mark, I, I have got a win over him, just to let you know. I have got a win over him. Have you? I beat him in 2015, mate, in front of five people. Never, never, never a doubt, mate. Never a doubt. I never in doubt. Never in doubt. Oh, I done him in fucking eight <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Tell size him this. That's my. That's my favourite. I as I. In fact, I'll send you a link, Marker. You'll love it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to see? You played with a couple of other teams, but is there any way to wrap up on Mark? I appreciate yeah, you coming I'm on the podcast. I'm the only player that's ever. I'm the only player that played for three clubs twice. So obviously, I wasn't. Here. As bad as what people say I was at training because I started and finished at St. Mun, played for Celtic twice and West Ham twice. So, you know, obviously, nobody else has done it apparently. Some man yeah. Iraq told me, so I'm not going to argue with him. I think Kenny Miller had a right good fucking go at it. Well, he, just kept, he just kept doing a yo yo between Celtic and Rangers, didn't he? He was like, he didn't know what fucking colours he was. Listen, Kenny was on it. Good player, but I can't even. I can't even. I mean, it's all right now, isn't it? Uh, it's just we more, we more couldn't do it because he, because he put, he got forty with the Celtic strip on one uh, day, and then the next day, Florida, don't they? Yeah, aye, he's in Florida. He couldn't, he couldn't really come back here, could he? Aye. Be honest about it. Just take some. He's hiding, he's hiding in a bin somewhere in case I get a fucking audio match with him. Anyone else saying get any, any question for Mark? I'll let him go because I might get in for this fucking Coming pop can of cider. Still today, still today, the 90 second footy quiz. Still we have, guys. Oh, right, 90 seconds. Go on next. He's doing uh, it. Hi, uh, Frank. Send me, send me your uh, phone Don't number you and I'll text you the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Every week on Football Daft, we put our guests' the football knowledge to the test, right? So, I've got a leaderboard, Frank. Right. Zappy, the leaderboard's Barry Ferguson. He's got 12. David McCracken's at the bottom with one. That was his number <laughs> <laughs> Alan Archibald, Brian Prunty are on 11. 
Murder on the Cloud's on 10. Oh, I'm not get double figures, don't worry about it, they're safe. Ian Murray's on 7, Lee Miller, Jordan Young and Bob Malcolm are on 6, and Peter Lovenkranz is on 3. Right, come on, I'll beat Peter. I need to beat Peter. Oh, come on, you've got to, big man. So, 90 seconds, Chris, you want to ask the question? Aye, that's your hero. Right, you ready, Frank? Ready, right. producer John, with the time. Your 90 yeah. seconds start now. Who was relegated from the Scottish Premiership last season? Last season? Oh, Aye. The D United. How many oh, points did Celtic... Right, go, go. How many points did Celtic win the Premiership by last season? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Twelve. Which team are nicknamed Bully Wee? Clyde. What was the score when you beat Australia at Hamden in the game you scored? 2-9. Which Scottish player plays for New York City? Scottish player? Aye. I don't know. Um, who was the Levy manager before Gary Holt? Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo, I don't know. Oh, Kenny Miller. How much did you move to West Ham for in your second spell? Uh, I don't know the official. 1.2. It was official. Name two of the teams left in the FA Cup in England. Don't know. Uh, Liber- no, Man City and... I don't know. <laughs> Liverpool, see. Like, which, teams have just, which team have just been awarded the Scottish Junior title? Who? Who cares? Who is the current manager of Dundee United? Uh, oh, you can't just come back for... <laughs> I can't imagine, good bar. I know him. And what year did you win the second division with West Ham? What? And what year did you win the second division with West Ham? Hey! He did answer that one with 1991. Oh, stop trying to get my other point there, Chris. <laughs> Aye, go on, many have got. Right, let's run through the right answers and the wrong answers. Right. Frank, it was uh, Dundee who were really relegated from the Premiership last season, not Dundee. Is Dundee? <laughs> How many points did Celtic win the Premiership by last season? It was nine. So um, oh. It's Gary Mackay Stephen. There's a Scottish player that plays for New York City. You got Kenny Miller. It was 1.25 million. You were right that you moved for. Uh, Man City are still in the FA Cup, but Liverpool are not. So I can't give you a point for that. Uh, Auchinleck Talbot, they won Talbot. the Bastards. senior title. Um, this week and uh, the cup manager of Dundee United is Robbie Nielsen and uh, it was 1991 yeah. Robbie so I knew Robbie but I couldn't remember his second name you've beaten Peter <laughs> Lovenkrantz so, so you've got five points yes I'm no, no two. bad no Frank bad. no bad there you go that's hopeless but anyway <laughs> as long as you beat Lovenkrantz in tracks that's all that matters mate Aye, not five ago. I got five. That's, that's, that's very up considering big boys. Yeah. It's a year after big boys. He's number five. Yeah, go. Anniversary today. Yeah, go. That's nice. Aye. That's nice. What Frank, a lovely cheers for coming on, mate. No, Aye. boys, listen, always good to see you. Good to see you, Greg. I've not seen you for ages, pal. Aye, when you're when you next doing the three tunes, when you're back doing a dressing, do Salkitz or Stevenson or fucking... Aye. Well, we're well, no boot, actually. Coronavirus, I forgot. <laughs> but no. you're so, always doing this neck of the bitch, pal. Sure, I'll bump into you. There's not many social distance in the world there, Oh, I get tell, I get tell off in uh, Tesco yesterday. Excuse me, you're walking down the wrong arrows. I had a jar of pickles in my hand. I wanted to launch half her face. But listen, she's the right idea. I was doing it wrong, do you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, Mark, thanks very much. And hopefully I'll see you again yeah. soon, man. So she's all left it. All right? Take care, thanks, Frank. Right, Thank you very much. Cheers, pal. Thank Cheers, you, my man. Thanks, Frank. Bye-bye. <laughs> Well, Troops, that was one of my favourite episodes. I enjoyed it myself. It was good. Right. Aye, good fun. I can see Chris Toll's hard on through that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so that's because I was looking at pictures of all your Frank sex bumps. Too good. Oh, is that my missus? I'm, I'm, I'm deep. <laughs> you, were, you were a bit more relaxed with Mark and you were with Muddle last week. I know. I, I felt like. I, I felt like Muddle was kind of like a, a, a father figure, but I felt like Frank was one of the boys. 
Aye, yeah, Murdo was like son Murdo kind of thing. Aye, I was kind of treating him with the respect he deserved. Aye. Aye. But, um, but Maggie, you just talked to him like fucking he's just one of the guys doing the booze, isn't it? I know, it's like, well, he's the one of your muckers, isn't he? Aye, he is, he's too good. He was good. He's good. 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 Show on. Get Who we got next box. week, Drips? Eh? Who we got next week, Drips? Next week. So just Hopefully, if he can work out, if he can work out how to work Zoom, it'll be Dick Campbell. Dick Campbell. Oh, yeah. So we can cancel that one because um, my one of my best mates plays for a bro, and I don't think there's any chance that he'll ever be able to fucking use Zoom. Put it that way, for my film. Yeah, they don't. Well, it's over to you for the old legends lottery next week. Wait, 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 wait. Right. And right, it can't okay. be, can be somebody you know, apparently. Right, Tony okay. Watt. Oh, no, it's all right, that's fine. Tony okay. Watt does count. I was only kidding you on, mate. Right, right. That's right, good. He calls on the fucking edge of the end, oh, oh, he? he called me an idiot, I've been wanting to fucking punch somebody. What, well, was you that called me an idiot? No, you called me an idiot, and I tell you, I take the door off. Oh, I see, I see, it's no bit money, you're a fucking idiot. Oh, I did call you an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Right boys, stay safe. Alright. <laughs> 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 Audio Frontier.